What's up, man? Can you hear me? Sound check, sound check. Thank you. Uh, my guests are not here yet, so.
Uh, and uh, I'm trying to admit Anna in, and it's just not letting me right now. So give me a second, everyone. It's really weird. Crossing the void, beyond the wall of worlds, and along the arc of time, dwell those not of our place go. or age. It is too easy to say that there is dark and there is light. It is too easy there we go, finally. to say that there are two sides to every coin. The reality is far worse, for law flirts with tyranny. Chaos invites freedom. Evil consumes all it knows. Good accepts suffering. <laughs> and those in the middle, they are worse, for they know Chuck. nothing but self. The Codex Infernum and the Codex Exaltum. Two source books that bring in depth knowledge about beings of all dispositions, from the farthest reaches of the heavens to the darkest depths of wretchedness. Both of these titles come with new, full color art, new creatures, new powers like possession, and a multitude of information providing lore, backgrounds, names, mechanics, stats, and much more. Much, much more. These incredible tomes are filled with demons and angels, devils, and celestials, unleashing the powers of good and evil, law and chaos, on your table. The Codices Infernum and Exaltum, bringing creatures hallowed and profane into your adventures. Pledge and share today. Troll Lord Games, join the fray. Hey. There we go. There we go. Now I can see you. Yeah, it was it weird. It just took forever. But it, it happened it happened before a couple of times. But it takes a long while for things to catch up. Tim's coming on. Uh, probably soon. sooner, more, sooner rather than later. So. Okay. Good. Should be good. Yeah. So, how are you? Oh, good. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. Yep. No worries. Yep. yep. Hello, Mike. Yep. chat looks a little bit different you have like shout outs and stuff at the at the top now it's um yeah, in a different it could way because i think troy did uh troy did something he made a, don yeah. a donation i think it's, it's kind of cool yeah. yeah um uh button here i think that's what did it yeah collects donations and stuff at the top oh is that what that post the hype chat oh okay um yeah. Awesome, man. I, I just... No, no, you didn't break anything, man. I was just like... No, you didn't break, you didn't break anything. That's <laughs> good. good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. You are good. Remember, Mysterious Tim will be on at some point shortly. Because he likes this topic. This is one of those that I thought I knew everything and then I forgot some stuff and then like Bill helped me with like, oh my god, you forgot this, you forgot that, I was like, oh my gosh. So that, that was really good to get in a perspective and I imagine there'll be stuff that Tim reminds me of that I forgot. Because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to, uh, a lot more in the evolution. Gotcha, Michael, afterwards. Nah, you're good, man. Bangkok, 6 a.m., nice.
tonight. The art of healing. Thanks for hopping out over the, the level one hype train. Thank you. That's cool. Thank you, everyone else. One thing that I forgot. Take one second here. One second. Give me one. It's always something. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Down. Live, two minutes early, so that's good. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. I'm Jake Hello, Lucas. I'm with Anna Meyer for a cool Gabin Sunday discussion. What's up, Will? How you doing? Um, how have you been, Anna? Things good? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a new doggy, kind of. Oh, yeah. really? Uh, tell yeah. us little, a little bit little about Little Chico. Yeah, Chico. He's, he's behind me somewhere. He's nearly three years old. So, so and now my... Hang on a second. There we go. Yeah. So he's 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 near about three years old. We'll see. He was in the Mike's extended family. He his mummy passed away, so he needed a new home. So we'll see. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah, but he he's either he's he's hysterical and very adorable at the same time. So I'm not I'm used to an old geriatric dog that I've <laughs> had for over ten years. And this one that we yeah we only had oh, him for two you. days so yeah we'll see well yeah. that's great I mean I, I'm I'm very happy to hear that yeah uh, you know yep. uh, so uh, pets are awesome uh, let me let me whoops yeah I'm trying to yeah I'm like wow this uh, the zoom so uh, of course there was a zoom update right did you see that Anna there was just uh, um, I, oh yeah they yeah, updated like, a couple uh, of days ago uh, I haven't uh, had any issues since have you had any no, it just um, – oh, I know what it is. I can't close this out. So I can't close this meeting chat box out. Let me see. Oh, there oh we go. okay. There, we there you go. go. Yeah, oh, you can't. That mm -hmm. was the problem. I managed to, to uh, – I couldn't close, close that it box out. out. Give me one second, yep. everyone. So tonight, so tonight we're going to talk about a, a really cool topic. It's called the art of healing. And I wanted to uh, – you know, I haven't done a lot of de deep dive campaign discussions lately. And I wanted to do yeah. one uh, tonight because uh, – hey, hey, Les – um, yeah, Les, I'm gonna uh, once the raid comes in from Blue Box, I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna do a quick uh, discussion on an article Les has has cooked up for for uh, for the community and and uh, for me. We'll we'll discuss it at that point uh, so we get a maximum amount of people. It's really cool. I'll just I want to sneak peek it. But I was thinking um, how the game has evolved since I started playing. You know, you had your you had your cleric. Um, cl you know, cleric was just, just a human person in 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 homes, basic, and then you had uh, clerics. Uh, but it was um, it was weird because in the original player's handbook, 
Uh, and let's take a look at that real quick. We'll flip over to that. I'll be going. I'll be referring to a lot of these books tonight as we start out this journey. So mm -hmm. mine's low. Okay. How about now? Is that better? How about now? Better. It sounds good for me, but better? it's what the better. what Goblin, the people at the worse? other end here is that. Yeah. That's all right. If it sounds good, I'm just going to leave it alone. So okay, um, good. all right. Uh, if you look at this and you go into the original um, player's handbook first edition and you come out and you start looking at classes and races on a cross-reference chart uh it, it has some weird things on it um uh about uh that uh, clerics uh no, look, dwarf no elf no gnome no halfling no uh right uh and no no halfling druids at this point either so only half elves half works and humans at the beginning mm -hmm. that's it at the beginning uh which was uh so no elves hey um mike good show this you. human supremacy in, in the early editions of the game the yeah. Other ones were not. yeah but that was that was it and and even the early rules uh, greyhawk said it's the human dominated continent and, and so uh, on so. absolutely and this wasn't yeah. uh, and uh, well greyhawks the game setting for the most part so a lot of it you know is mm -hmm. uh, i'm doing the giveaways tonight so we're doing classic D, &D reprints got that role in there and thank you very much for that resub i really appreciate yeah. it uh oh oh it's patrick patrick thank you man thank you very much really kind of you yeah so um waiting for tim tim will be on at some point um you know he gets through his family stuff so Huh. You got you, uh, at this point early on um, in the base game. This is where we we'll start first edition. You got your cleric. You got your weird cleric that can only use blunt weapons because they can't shed blood, right? Yeah, it was still that kind of generic, almost Christian priest yeah. monk kind of warrior yeah. priest medieval template of a cleric. That was still the 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 dominant yeah. idea of. of of, of the cleric so to speak yeah definitely and then you have like you, you know you have um your druid can do some healing so and then you have your paladin which is human only here too mm -hmm. can do some can do uh you know can do uh laying on hands and that's a magical effect and some yeah it was like your level. knight templar kind of uh -huh. but but we have to remember that all these fantasy tropes and and cool inspiration we have today didn't exist back then and it was it right. was Tolkien, a, a few other authors, and it was medieval stories and poems and fairy tales and stuff. That was and folklore. That was yep. what what existed. That was it. That was all that there was. Um, yeah. But I'm not going to go into Sonics because that'll just open up another can of worms. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, that that's gonna, a different a different part of it. Going to yeah. stay away from Sonics. But so yeah. here's my trivia question. Name the first. It, um, non magical healing it's in the game non magical uh, non magical healing. healing it's in the game first edition anyone in the audience want to try that one it's the first non magical healing in the game nope that's a spell mending <laughs> yeah so that is first magical, so. sid i don't know what that means deo rub dirt on it well yeah but uh, by uh, i'm talking about a, uh, an ability from a class Aid is not. Aid is a spell, and aid is uh, a, 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 not an yeah. arcana. Nope, no bandages. No. All right. I got you. Yes, Sam, you're right. The monk. Oh, monk, the monk. The monk ability, yes. Yeah, so, ah. so if we go early on, the monk, the monk here, if we go into your ability E right here, at seventh level, the monk gains the ability to heal damage on his or her body. The amount which can be healed is too, you know, so it's like a mental thing, right? It's not psionics. It's just a will thing. It's like a trance thing. Uh, and so, yep, the monk, the monk, and it's die four plus one. Now, we changed that to die eight plus, le uh, plus one at that level. So we added, a, we boosted it up a little bit. So the evolution of healing is healing now is basic for, for you got your spells, you got your potions, right? You got, so you got cure light wounds. You got first. There's no second level healing spells. You got cure. There's no third level healing spells. Okay. First mm -hmm. level, cure wounds. Fourth level, cure serious wounds. Fifth level, cure critical wounds. Sixth level, heal. That's it. And lay on hands. That is it early on. No wonder the class was boring. 
but heel existed for clerics yeah, in I first said, edition too. I said heel, as, yeah. So, yeah. Six level, mm -hmm. six level spell. Yeah. Six level, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are that's it. That is yeah. it. We're, we're especially priests of money. Nope. They and then not. you had the restoration spells that healed special things like right. Yeah. Level drain. Reg and regenerate yeah. exists, and they're yeah. all seventh level yeah. spells. You have to be yeah. a sixteenth level cleric yeah. to cast those spells, which is mm -hmm. disgusting. And mm -hmm. ridiculous when you think about it. How crazy! Well, damage that is. was 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 supposed to be real, meaning it yep. takes a month to heal bones and rest and recovery. What did you heal? Was it two hit points a day or something like that? Maybe three if you were bed rested or, or something like that. So you can expect yeah. a tenth level fighter to to have to spend a month in bed to heal up between adventures. Yep. Uh, I, there's, there was a lot of that going on. Yeah, there's a lot mm -hmm. of that going but on. But that was that was the idea of, of the game was that if right. you get nearly killed, then you have to spend a long time to rest and recover. Again, the brutal realism of the rules. Brutal, yeah, absolutely. And so I can see why the cleric is a boring class. Regenerate never made sense to me. There was no mechanic to remove extremities, so why regenerate? So because that's a good, yeah. that's a good question, mm -hmm. but. That doesn't mean, uh, uh, Michael, that in the game you can't have traps, scythe blades that cut fingers off. I mean, they were in the game back then. They just weren't like written up anywhere, right? Traps, traps. That, that, it was, it was more like to, to add add story to it. It yep. was not something that happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, like you said, traps, curses, various other things that could cause you to to yes, get were. screwed up. Lando and Lando and Sam Weiss are correct. There were limb removing yeah. things. Mm -hmm. so, like vocal blades, vorpal blades and sharpness. And, yes. yep. yeah. Withering effects too, yes. Absolutely. But this, yeah, is one of these many inconsistencies in old school. In in rules, they wanted to stay away from all of that, but they still needed it for thematic reasons. So that's why they still put in sort of sharpness, vorpal, and, and traps and stuff that could do it. So they put it, put it in, but they it was kind of on the sidelines of the rules, so to speak, which was kind of common in old school. They they didn't put in rules for a lot of stuff, but it was still there thematically. And many monsters can do it. There were various other things that all of a sudden could break the rules. And 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 in a way, I think it's kind of especially cool if you want to run things that are a little bit more horror thing, because right. then the DM can can do cool stuff that the player characters can't. So in that sense, it's 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 kind of a, a good thing, I think. So from this point, um, you go to Darkana. Next mm -hmm. next evolution here. Yeah. And there was. There was this argument. When I started the campaign, my guys like Tim and Walt were scared to death because I did death at zero hit points, not going down to the negatives. You were... I, said, I said there was no yeah. way to stop it. There was no way to stop the negative effect, right? There's no, you know, uh, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, but then there is mention to the, you go down a point until you're stabilized, point, 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 mm -hmm. down to negative 10. Then yeah. after Kana comes out. You were never yes you <laughs> you were always scared Tim you come on and I was scared of you so it was mutual right it was very mutual there on the scaring we were all scared back in the day because it was very deadly the game so if we come mm -hmm. here and we go to cleric and we're going to go to cleric third level in Unertakena here's the first uh, cool evolution change I like and I don't know what I, I love this spell we we you see that all the time like, it's they call death store. Uh, so this this spell will allow you say someone goes from negative one negative nine you hit you hit you, you, you touch them cast that door they immediately go to zero not only need one other healing and then get back up and functioning it's kind of almost mm -hmm. I hate to say this it's almost like it's, the save effect in five e it's the way it it's is. a five e yeah, yeah definitely. except that someone has to yeah. cast a spell on you mm -hmm. so um, all right no problem uh, that's all good Tim all good you know where we are uh, so death door is a staple. For mm -hmm. priests and clerics in my game, for uh, you know, for fifth level or higher, it's either this or another spell that they they always have one of. So and, and so this spell is is vital to our game because we we made it f go down to negative nine, negative ten. You're dead. Here comes question number one to the audience: Which is the exception to dying at negative ten rule? Let's see if anyone knows this. 
You mean in standard uh, first edition rules or, yeah, or first edition when Arthur okay. Kana came yeah. out and the dragon came out? I know you know, Tim. So something can go I down. I that. Someone can go down. No, no, no. We're talking hit points. Going all the way down. Everyone dies at negative 10 except what? Who? Except who? No. I've, it's I a class. One. Class. Oh, okay. It's a class. Mm -hmm. There's a class. <laughs> no, that's funny, Mike. No. Incorrect, Michael. But you're on the right track. Nope. Mm-mm. -mm. I was thinking it was yes, just the Tim, one. Yes, Tim, Tim, the Cavaliers. Oh. Cavaliers get, go down to the negatives of what they start with their hit point total at first level. So if they have 13, or 13 hit points, it would max hit points. Then they get, it can go down to negative 13. Uh, you know, uh, so they go, they die at negative 14. So the Cavalier class itself has that written in. Go into Dungeon 72, and you can see that. So that was kind of, we thought that was kind of cool, an ability for Cavaliers. Um, yeah, uh, so that was that's an exception. So Death Door, when Arthur Kane, there was a lot of you know, there was a lot of weird things I didn't like about Arthur Kane, but I love most of it. I love, I love a lot more than I dislike in Arthur Kane. Now, there is another class that can heal, and this is, I think, where we, Anna, we actually, this is the this evolves into much more in our game. All right, and uh, it's a great class. The class is overdone. And someone said barbarians earlier, but it's barbarians. They throw a lot of super. They become superheroes in in one uh, e. They get double hit points. They get double mm -hmm. con bonus with with not with uh, you know leather and no armor and they get, so crazy stuff. But they have the ability, um, as long as I can find it, a first aid. All right. And if you read the first aid rule here, do you allow healing spells to do any other healing to character under your point? Uh, yes, but it, they are not functioning, uh, Michael. They're not functioning unless it's a heal, okay? Unless it's a superpower saw. I'll explain that in a second. So this skill allows a barbarian to bind wounds, set sprains, broken bones, concoct natural antidotes, and natural cures for diseases. This means the barbarian immediately gains one hit point, and thereafter he or she re regains hit points at twice the normal rate. For rest, so they such first aid restores one hit point immediately. So the, we don't allow them to. Uh, this is our rule because combat, and you know, you got your wounds. They can do it to one person. They can do it on themselves. They can do it on someone else right after combat. So a lot of people don't know about this because it's really buried in the rules. So and how many people play old school barbarians anymore except old school players, right? I mean, there's yeah. barbarians in third, fourth, fifth edition. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, but they, they evolved in that. Yeah. But it's interesting to see that the barbarian is, I think, the first example of the the way of uh, using class material as a way of enticing players to buy stuff, so to speak. Meaning you you boost players, you give more information to players and stuff as a way of, of because the, the original books were basically written for and meant to be bought by DMs. And then comes, this is one of the first examples of that culture of making stuff for players rather than for DMs in order for, for, for play and to please players and, and write it as a player perspective and boost player stuff, so to speak, and, and the characters exclusively. I think it's because that is something that has been, especially in 5e, it's been been really been that way. You boost okay. the players a lot, so to speak. And and I, from a commercial standpoint, I can totally get it. They are 10 times more players or at least five times more players than they are DMs. Yeah. So if you want them to, to, to buy stuff, because DMs are usually the ones buying the stuff. So, so you want to have player specific stuff. And I think Barbarian was written that way because the earlier classes were very much by hyper limitation rather than enabling stuff. I mean, you can see, you can see how yeah. it goes like this. Um, and mm -hmm. this is the era. Of, I don't know how I want to call it the golden era, but it's the era of experimentation where they're trying yeah. a lot of well, different yeah. things. They mm -hmm. put these art, they put these classes in usually in dragon. Then, mm -hmm. you know, people like them. Some of them make the cut. Some don't. Yeah. Right? And, and, and that's just, and that, that, and that's a, that's a, that's a fine. That's a good thing, you know. It's a really good thing that, uh, and you know, we all know the ones that don't make the cut. There's some really dumb ones. Uh, oh, I won't say dumb. I, let me rephrase that. Um, they are, um, a Ravaljix. They are useful as NPC classes. A lot of them, but then there's some that are in that in between realm, like Duelist Bandit, that I love. So you know, mm -hmm. uh, so 
Um, all right, so you got a first date ability here. You got Death Store here. Um, beyond that, in the Arctic Arcana, there's still no changes to clerics. There's still just clerics and druids. But there is a change to clerics here. And we'll go into the, the race cross-reference chart here. All of a sudden, everyone can be clerics but Grugok. Gray, Hill, Mountain, you know, there they are. Dark Elves, uh, you know, because you're going to be Dark Member. This is when, this is the start of Dark Elf um, and Deep Gnome NPC, uh, PCs. You know, so this is the start of that. Um, yes, uh, Razkill, the Paladin of every alignment, the Lyran Paladin, the Lawful Neutral one, super powerful, and all the other ones in there. So it, it's a pretty neat uh, point. So, uh, another evolution here. And also, are halflings allowed to be druids at this point? Halflings become allowed, are allowed to be druids now. So, you have that added in as well. Now, at this point, we're, we're, we start, half ogres in our game as well from all the articles that came out with them and Roger Moore's and Gary's and previously. So, we have half ogres in our game at this point, too. All right. So, clerics abound here, and we don't have specialty priests yet, so everyone's a cleric. of. No one is playing, let's be honest, at this point. Of all clerics in our game, in our, our game at this point, 5% are one-class clerics. All of them are multi-class, because they're boring. They're just like, okay, I can turn on dead and I can heal, right? It, they haven't gotten any, and I'm not, this is not a specialty priest uh, discussion, but I'm just saying that, that that's the way it went in our game. You got, you know, you got fighter clerks, you got fighter clerk mages, that's a gazumba, fighter clerk mage. So, you know, you got cleric thieves, cleric rangers, all sorts of multi-class cleric classes at this point in the evolution of the game. All right, and that is a fun time. We're having a blast here at, at, at this point. Um, and then at some point, uh, you see, and let me make sure I'm not missing anything in this era. So, you still have... Your healing potions, you got your lay on hands, um, you got your barbar barbarian first aid. You have oh, you do have another. You have, do have another non magical healing. Hey, darling, thank you. You do have another one, and I'm not going to bring it up. But you have um, the halfling guardian. I think is just out, and halfling guardian has a healing trance ability just like, uh, just like the monk, except it's a little more powerful. So you have that ability for the halfling. Guardian, in addition to him having spells as well. Uh, let's see. We're missing one. We're missing another big one. All right. Barbarian Cleric, dual class. Uh, well, I haven't allowed that yet, but the Barbarian Cleric is... Uh, it's its own class, Troy. The Barbarian Cleric. It's in an article, and Tim actually has one in the game. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Blue, as well. Um, a bizarre healing that I am missing... Anyone think? In first edition, a really bizarre one. I'm going to give you a hint. Yeah, Zapnap Panea, the guy who got, the guy who went to pig for dinner and the, the, the cultist and then one captured him. That guy. <laughs> you remember. I'm going to give you one hint. That's my hint. I'm glad oh, I wrote these notes down. Yeah. Uh, Jay abused him. I actually have a couple others, too. Yep. Any guess? A he another healing in first edition. No? This is this is good to put my, my yeah. uh, ob uh, the obscure knowledge of first edition that I've forgotten a long time ago. This, this is awesome. This goes back to the player's yep. handbook. I missed mm -hmm. it. Yep. Go back to the player's handbook. Because you haven't played with it for... <laughs> Except in your games for yeah better thirty years yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we go here to the druid. When the druid changes back, right here to their normal form at seventh oh, level, yeah. That, they, that, yeah, they yeah they heal ten to six die six times ten percent of their yeah. total damage. That, that, to me, to me that I that I wondered why. Meaning, Thanks why Bishop. why would that even I, be? And and it, it persisted through a lot of editions. I yeah. think third edition Druids were the same thing. I really? think even fourth, yeah. I think even up to, I'm not sure how it is in fifth edition now, but I think it's been one of the things that has been there for, for quite some time. But another interesting thing is what uh, 
the spell schools of healing belong to in various editions over the years. That is an interesting. In the beginning, first edition, meaning you still run them as necromancy, don't you? Necromantic? Uh, yeah, I think it's he- meaning they were most of the spells when we looked when you looked at first right. edition players handbook. They are like cure wounds and stuff. They are necromancy spells. Right, but in second yeah. edition it really clarifies it. So we'll okay. get to that. We'll get to that. And yeah. I'll show you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, okay. Then we then we can continue because there's there's an interesting story going on further editions okay. now that because they've been all, not every spell school but they've been lots of them over the years. Yeah. Sam, it's when they change back. It's not when they change to in here. Here's if you, if you read. Hey, Rob Phantom. Thanks for the raid, man. Hope things are going well with you. Let me find your shout out here. I got so many. To, here we go. Good to see you, Rob. We're talking the art of healing. So if we come here, it's... So, so ability to change up three times a day. Uh, you know what? It actually... <laughs> the size. Each assumption of a new form. So that is... Hey, mm-hmm. you're, you're actually right, Sam. We only do it when you change back, but actually it says... New you, you, every time you change a form, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's some of the best... It's a, yeah. a healing you get for free that is super effective. And to me, it's like crazy overpowering. Yeah, so that's why we only do it when you go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I, I would not Thanks, say Rob. that in any any time, so to speak. Meaning you don't heal, you're just yeah, you're damaged you're by the difference. Huh? No, I'm not. I don't want to. I think okay. druids are super powered already, so to speak. So that's one. Um, let's um, a couple others that I we missed that I missed. <sighs> there is a class that has one of the most crazy spells ever. That Anna, you may remember in the very first fundraiser, got used in Save the Group. So let's see if you can remember that when we were fighting a Miracle the Chaotic, the very first fight. And it is it is a class spell that is, yeah. See, I, is I, it I, he re- healing related spell that uh-huh. saved the whole group? Yeah. It is. It's a it's a tough one. Well, there is where is mass heals that you can uh, you can not in first edition. Can, oh, there were none. Uh-uh. Okay, I thought there were some so healing word. That was the first no, edition. Okay. No, uh-huh. Not at all. Okay. Let's, go, let's go to Illusionist. I thought they were... Allu- What's up, Dale? Oh. Illusionist has okay. a bizarre, bizarre first edition healing spell. Yeah. Uh, which um, is, is a... I don't know if it is in, it's in future editions or not. You'll have to tell me. All right. Here we go. Illusionist spell, fourth level. Dispel Exhaustion. At fourth level touch, duration is three turns per level, so it lasts forever and affects yeah. one to four persons. The illusionist is able to restore 50% of lost hit points to all persons. Humans, demi humans, and humans. He or she touches during the round that is cast subject to a maximum of four persons. The spell gives the illusion to the person touched that he or she is free and fresh and well. Stamina is removed, but when the spell duration expires, the recipient drops back to their actual hit point strength. So... And the spell allows it's like temporary to... hit points in a way. It is, and, yeah. And, and in combat, without come being cold that way, yep, absolutely. Yep. So CNC illusions have kill light wounds. That's interesting. Michael did not know that. Very cool there, uh, um, Rob, for telling me that as well. Dispel exhaustion. It was a huge spell that we kind of forgot about, and then uh, Alan used it in the middle of the Miracle the Chaotic fight, and you know. So exhaust. What, what spell school is that? Take a look. Probably abjuration. Illusion phantasm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It's interesting that you can get all sorts of effects that seem to be outside of the school, but on the other schools were more just fla- flavor in first edition. Yeah, absolutely. We're just like, oh, yeah. let's call it this and let's call it yeah. that. No, you're mm-hmm. 100% yeah. correct on that. Yeah. And then it, it added more more AD&D or D&D science in third edition, a little bit more second edition, but third edition was when spell schools were, were more key to the game, so to speak, or central to the game. So I remember reading that spell, but not realizing the usefulness. It is a hugely useful spell yeah. because you don't have to be that high level to cast it. And if you got some mega fighters in your party, and say they have 100 hit points and they're down to mm-hmm. 30, yeah. they're going to heal half that. 35 mm-hmm. points, of heal, that's just one of them. So um, very cool, uh, Rob. Yeah, and it sounds like maybe uh, the CNC Illusions has fixed some things. Illusions are tough to to play. Perceptual, yeah. yeah. That's that's what yeah. I call temporary hit points. You yep. you 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 believe that that you're strong, so to speak. You can. Now, 
Let yeah, there, there's a couple. You see, if you get to, there's a couple of more kind of pseudo healing forms that I think you could, you you would get to. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just make sure that I can remember that I think we're in the old school as well, in, for even the first genes. edition. I'm just making sure I'm going through. All right, uh, we're yeah. going to stay in illusionist, but we're going to go down to Kena. Two spells that are in under Decana from Lucius. But you drop back to your actual. Right, but those come off first, though, Scottish. So those you're like, oh, man. So th those 35 points you got as a fighter, for example, the damage comes off there. So it's almost like the aid spell with Karks, right? Where you get one to eight points back. It's a super aid almost. Because that the aid spell is temporary, too. Yep. All right, let me go here. We're going to go into the well, realm of... Len Lakoff is going to log off of our stream because of this spell. <laughs> I ought to remember that. So, and it's it's a fifth level spell. And it's a little weird. I thought it was fifth. Oh, it's fourth. It's only fourth. Oh, you know what? It would help if I'm in if I'm an illusionist and not magic user. Illusionist, illusion. My apologies. Here we go. I thought it was fifth. Here it is. Dream! Another... Uh, I remember that now. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was trying to explain and you said, no, no, no. And, and you were right. And he just... <laughs> yep. Dream. A dream spell is a form of limited wish, but it has far more limited scope. The illusionist must actually find a comfortable place to rest, lie prone, or compose his or thoughts. And uh, under, uh, as you're, you cast a spell, go to sleep, and if you sleep for eight hours, uh, the, ma the magic will be effectuated one to two hours later. Here's some things you can dream. Recovery individuals lost hit points. You can dream mm -hmm. that they come back. Restoration of a body member, which is a hand or foot or fingers, or we do an eye, we allow that. Um, you know, And then some other, other effects you can see here. But you can, the illusionist dream thing. So when someone in my game goes... I lost a hand. Well, you know, we're gonna. This is not a high level. Uh, you know, fifth level illusionist spell is what ninth or tenth level actual illusionist can cast this. Um, so it is a very limited form of limited wish. But teeth. If people get teeth knocked out, they're always looking for an illusionist to dream back. <laughs> so I'm alignment with land. Illusions should not heal. Rich, 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 rich. This is written by Gary Gygax. So you can't argue it. <laughs> That's what I had to say to Lynn, and he, yes, so, <laughs> it's all good. Everyone, you, you don't have to use this stuff, I just, uh, <laughs> come on, man, that was funny. Uh, yeah, that was really funny, especially uh, since he argued about Gary had the right, so to speak, yeah. and it was, that's why I, I that, that would never be my point, that just because... Gary's not, not always right, I, and I... No, I agree, but, um... Yeah. Now, an even better spell, which you really got to read it, the Super Rest spell, uh, maybe it's seventh. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was in here. Fifth? Oh, here it is. Fifth. It's fifth. Is, it's fifth. Hmm. Tempest Fugit. This powerful illusion affects the minds and bodies of all those of the area of effect. Basically, every turn 10 minutes spent under the Tempest Fugit spell seems like a full hour to those within its dormer. So you can have illusions in your party, cast this Tempest mm -hmm. Fugit, and an 8-hour rest will only take 8 turns. So that's only an hour and 20 minutes, and then you can do all healing, get all your spells back. Yeah. Um, so I extremely limited this spell in use in the game, that they can only have one of these taken per, per game. That's it. So uh, with that, so this is a super powerful rest spell. Uh, to get, and you'll get back your normal healing, you know, with, with this uh, natural healing. You know, uh, but you must eat, sleep, and forth according to the accelerated rate. So it is a uh, it is an interesting, interesting spell. Duration's five turns per level. It lasts a long time. So uh, run, yes. More fun stuff, absolutely. CC Illusion says dream as it's more like what Lanfear does in the Wheel of Time. Okay. Excellent. So they go into the mind, basically. They go into their mind and then they, uh, and, and they, uh, that's neat. All right. So let's go. Um, and that was, uh, like I said, Bill helped me with some, some of these I completely forgot. Um, Tim, let me know. So, some other things. Damaging items or healing items. 
that are in the game at this point. We already talked about the sword of um, uh, sword of sharpness, cutting off limbs, vorpal sword cutting off heads, swords of wounding, one hit point per level extra and bleed damage for ten rounds, and those stack. So that's a really nasty weapon. Countering that is a periaptive wound closure, which is in the first edition, which stops you from going down. So if you're a negative, if you're at zero and you're in the negatives, say you're at negative two, you don't go down level, level, level. And also that your uh, your sword wounding uh, wounding weapons don't work on you with a periaptive wound closure. That is the problem with HP not being actual body damage. Gary Zion for the only the last ten hit points are body. Well, I, I've never looked at it that way, Rich. I, I never tried to look at it that way because it just you know. Uh, um, you have you have a uh, um, you have a realism to it, and then you have a uh, a non-realism to it, and uh, um, that is uh, that is you know it's the way. So, um, and then again, you know, everyone sets a point in the game. Five E goes hard in that direction. Okay. Uh, some other things, first edition wise, that can can really damage the hell out of you. Uh, and then clay golems. If you look under the clay golem in the first edition, the monster manual, I don't know if it's in future editions. Um, <laughs> the clay golem um, damage is permanent, uh, cannot be healed. You have to get uh, the healing effect of a clay golem done by like a 16th level priest or cleric. Uh, that's the only way you can heal it. So um, really a nasty thing for, for clay golem. Also mummy rot is another one where it negates all healing spells. So that's something else. you gotta, you gotta wonder about. Um, and that's a, uh, a mummy rot's a curse. So I think you have to have a remove curse done. It's either, mm -hmm. it's either remove curse or cure disease. One, you know, I always, forget, I always get them mixed up, which is which yeah. on that. So, so, so mm -hmm. what about the vampiric uh, touch? Was that in first edition? No. No, it was it was, that's a good one yeah. though that's a good one yeah i was thinking meaning i, I was more asking like the, this type of of negative necromantic meaning stealing hit points from others would that even because i thought it was in been in the game since the inception but it hasn't so okay no it because has it, not yeah yeah but that's okay i mean you find that you find these things out and it's all uh, yep. you know it's all because it's a big thing in 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 third edition and even i use it in my campaign for but we get to that part too. Yeah, we're yeah. almost there. Yeah, that's why please, fantastic. please continue. This is a great. Uh, yeah, you know, I want to going going back dive. over old old school where we come from super, in healing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Super deep dive. Yep. All right, players uh, and I. Um, I don't know where I got this, but here a second edition, just print only um, uh, book. Um, this is where there are spells in this book that really caught my eye. And uh, they're also in the eye is the evil. It's the first time mm -hmm. I saw a lot of them, uh, including spells like vampire touch, a lot of necromancy yep. spells, contagion. Mm -hmm. They're all in here in second edition, yep. but then these, these books came out and that is the Tome of magic and players option. Both came out. Oh yeah. Like the 2.5 edition. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and their ring of vampire regeneration. Yeah. Something I don't, um, Ring of, I don't give out the Rings of Regeneration anymore. Uh, the Ring of Vampiric Regeneration heals it heals at the damage that you do on someone, uh, yep. you know, back. So um, I think the I think the trick the fellow party members are believing they are not bleeding to death. <laughs> yes, you can do a lot of things in the game. So specialty priests are in second edition are gold. Love specialty priests. You have priests that can't heal anymore. You have priests that cannot turn undead. You have priests that um, have excessive, uh, have extra healing. Like, uh, and if you go through, it's all based on stuff in books like Greyhawk Adventures or From the Ashes or, you know, even the Free City Grok box set. Um, like, pay Paylor priests, uh, their healing done is as medium at, mi at, mi uh, at, at, at worst. So if you're all die eight, it's a five, mi it's a five minimum. Because it's their, they worship Paylor and they get extra healing. Um, there are items that appear in in Grauk Adventures between that one e and second e, um, e era, like a healing cap of Valuna, which doubles healing spells for, for for the party. But this is where the explosion comes. A lot of stuff goes multiple directions. Um, spells um, really go all over the place and there's publications everywhere there's publications in dragon there's publications like 
I won't go through it, but like this, from uh, from the, the, the lands, of, there's prayers from the faithful. Right? Lots of stuff. There's this. The complete pre-Sam book. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so there's stuff all over at this point. But, Anna, let's go here first. When we go all the way to the appendix of, of the player's option book. All right. This is where you're talking about where we can get here we go. All right. So here it is. Appendix four. Here are all the spheres. Now they've broken all the spells that are in the books uh, from Player's Handbook, Second Edition, Player's Option, to Magic. Um, and they, they, they chop them up here. Uh, and they tell you where they appear. So if we go here to... Um, they are not necromantic spells. Uh, cure spells. Your spells are no longer I'm necromantic. I'm curi curious. I'm to mm -hmm. get it go, here. Yep. Go to page 187. Yep. It's, a, it's an interesting discussion. 187, healing. Edge. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so there's, cure, you know, it tells you. And then there's necromantic. So necromantic yeah. is like raising the dead and restore strength. Uh, yep. You know, remove paralysis. That's necromancy. Tui did a good job of reorganizing things. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah, one, he was a mess, Richard. Dead on right. And Tui really helps. But it, it's interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, they changed perspective. One, he was... was uh, the perspective was from the rules to get a, a game that works from a rules perspective. In 2E, when they got to this point, they all they changed the perspective and said, okay, what if a fantasy world, meaning how does it work in from a world perspective, and then bolt the rules on there? That's my sense that all of a sudden the world became the much more important and they made tried to make rules that explain the world rather than a game that came with the setting. And, and, right. and yeah, no, it's a great point on that. Um, that that's what, um, you know, uh, they're looking at it and they're, uh, so this is where, this is my glory error where I see, yeah. I see, uh, especially priests are, are mm -hmm. able to be now yep. divvied up and to have a lot of really cool abilities. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. standard mundane cleric was kind of pushed to the sidelines and you had all sorts of specialty priests and, and, and all the demi humans, even humanoids and stuff got shamans and all sorts of, of cool stuff happening. Definitely, and this book is really good for this. Now, note yeah. the following: I don't, you can, you don't have to use this. You can change it up however you want. But like you know, Malden and I both are big on the specialty priest, and this is like a, like I said, a golden era for me. I think it's the most, like I said, elementalists and specialty priests are my, uh, you know, wonder, wonderful ticket here uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to the game at this point. So, hey, Tim, what's going on? Uh, hello hello we're hello in the, we're in the second edition era anything you want to uh fill in with the first edition uh that we did not discuss no you did a pretty good job i think you covered all the hey, Bill. Yeah. significant ones i guess though in second edition with non-weapon proficiencies heal shows its face so it's kind of like the, the scholarly version of the first aid of the mm -hmm. barbarian right so yeah that kind of, I didn't know if you hit that, but that was started in second edition or it actually started in the wilderness survival guide. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The survival well, guide started getting, stuff yeah. too. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And then it kind of came on over from that. Yeah. Definitely. And it's been you're, in you're the game in ev every edition since there's been the medicine skill. It's still the medicine skill that you can do stuff. Even Pathfinder adopted and kept that too. So, so it's still there. So um, from this, you can create all sorts of great, you know, you take your spheres. So just so you know, in a, and especially priest, if you have a minor sphere in something, you can cast up a third level. You need to have a major sphere to cast fourth level and beyond on spells. Yeah. And that's a huge thing because then you can give a lot of these. Uh, now, remember, once again, raising the dead is not the same as healing. Healing is under the healing sphere. Raising the dead is under necromantic sphere. So that's the difference. Now, whether you hear hmm. that or not, but early editions, the skills. Right, can because it's basically... The, the race dead is just basically calling you your, your soul back and just just plussing you up enough right it's almost like uh it does like a little bit of necromantic surgery so like the the necromantic forces kind of put everything back in in, in its 
you know, if it's all torn up inside, it'll put it back together, but you're only at one hit point because you're, you're right. still messed up. Mm -hmm. um, and then you are in, you're in the ICU for. Yeah, you're long. back from the dead, but you're not healed up. So, yeah. 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 So um, you have, you have, uh, all right, at the time of Wilderness Star Wars guy came out, it felt like they were just killing time. Uh, possibly, yep. Uh, yep. So, hey, Naz, nah, what's going on, man? All right, so second edition is a glorious era because um, the spells have come out in this time frame that, and there's one big one um, that's in the player's handbook, second edition, and has already mentioned it. How the heck are Iusian and the role priests healing themselves? That, that's that's a great question, and it depends on the edition because a lot of times in, in through D&D history, even evil ones could heal. But but yeah. yeah, but on the other hand, in my campaign, no, that that's a that's a life giving thing, so to speak. So so what the evil ones can't do it. I am yeah. um, I was yeah. I was scouring different spells for the uh, the reverse dungeon because the, the yeah. shaman the shaman was a shaman of the goblin deity and the, got rejected when he reincarnated and wasn't a goblin anymore. Yeah. So he sought out a uh, a strange elemental. Uh, uh, type deity or being that has you know uh, fire the uh, the it has fire ice and death as kind of its you know major focuses and one of the spells I found is when he casts it it only lasts a couple rounds but within twenty feet of him anyone gets killed it heals him one die six hit points. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so I think very... when you're when you're evil, the healing yep. comes through the sacrifice of others. Well, the biggest, exactly. Yep. The biggest one that Anna mentioned is vampiric touch. Yeah, that was the first kind of standard spell yeah. in this this yeah. case, and that... and so I, and yeah, and and then you have and now comes the interesting thing is that the, the one of the 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 kind of interesting is that the the um, the spell. Uh, the spells, what school healing have been to. I mean, it started in necromancy, mm -hmm. and then in second edition, was it still in necromancy for no, the most it went, part? It went to healing. Heal curing spells went to healing. Spirit. Oh, yeah, they became it, its own spell school then. Right, because they wanted to separate yeah. necromantic from he yeah. healing. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and in third yeah. edition, they became creation spells. Conjuration, oh, okay. sorry, conjuration, because you Joe conjure Curtis. life mm -hmm. force, so to speak. That became the idea. And in, in fifth edition, in 2014, the original fifth edition, they became evocation spells. And I would now you, in you, the re transmutation is what makes more sense to me. Where yeah, it's kind of yeah, I, I, yeah. Lo see a lot of do it that way too. And now in the revised fifth edition, they become abjuration spells because they are protecting you and 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 warding you, so to speak, from from ill and harm and stuff. Uh, so Lord, they become yeah, Lord yeah. Tigor. That's a, that, that's not what it means. I, 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 a good priest can heal an evil character. Evil oh, yeah. priests can't <laughs> heal. And and to yeah and in, in my spells. yeah yeah in my campaign it's not the 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 alignment of the the priest it's not the alignment of the caster of the spell it's the power that gives the magic so to speak and 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 that means that you can have an evil a, a cleric who, who who has a very evil outlook on things and go around doing evil things if if he for some reason is still uh, given powers by a deity that is not evil that can that can heal then he can still heal so to speak but as soon that deity might revoke the if he goes off the rails too much the the deity might say no 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 you can't do that in my name and and then then squander the the or or re withdraw the ability for that cleric or or what it is to 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 cast healing spells because it comes at the cost for 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 the deity to to administer heal, so to speak. It's it's a it's it's a costly endeavor for deities to hand out life force, and and that's why why you have various vampiric stuff. So so I use in clerics and stuff. They basically steal hit points from other creatures. So you butcher someone and then you heal yourself or or someone the, else from yeah. it. Yeah. The um. In the um again the reverse dungeon just because I was looking at the most recently mm -hmm. the um witch doctor a, again he was rejected by the goblin deity so now he's worshiping a, a uh, death undying so he's mm -hmm. it's a priest necromantic collection of spells some of them are spe specific necromancer type spells 
And some of them are just, uh, you know, clerical spells, but none of them are cure. Yep. They don't cure anything. Yeah, Rich, yep. we haven't done that yet. I, I, I'm getting there. Trust me. I'm getting there as we've added stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what did he? Uh... Uh, herbs, healing herbs and stuff. We never got, we never yep. did that yet. We're not to that point in our game yet, but it's it's coming. It's mm-hmm. coming. Um, and so- the temporary hit points have become more of a standardized part of the game, so to speak. And I see it as as a way of you inspire someone to to drain themselves a little bit more. So 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 I have that. I use the clerics can can give temporary hit points to to like create PCP. Yeah. yeah, but that's an ad, that's a custom, that's a personal ad though, right? That's not it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the, yeah my, my meaning my whole damn magic system is is kind of now <laughs> brewed. <laughs> into to and oh. and I, my healing spells are abjuration spells because they're they're not necromancy or anything that way they and and because it's the, the the spell school is more like how you cast them and stuff and then they have they have celestial uh, or they radiant power so it comes from the higher planes so to speak so only deities and stuff that are attuned or live in the higher plane can <clears throat> can give um, healing to 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 their their servants, so to speak, their clerics, or what 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 not. Yeah, even if they exist already, the idea of necromancy. Healing. So about this time, right after, well, right before, mm-hmm. we've been playing one e forever on Arcana. We have cavaliers, we have barbarians, and then second edition, we start getting into their priests. We started using these great charts, right? Critical hits and fumbles, which is probably a little bit before we started two e. Uh, I think we dealt with uh, with uh, catastrophic healings or allowing cure serious or better, which is a fourth level spell. I think that's how we handled it, Tim, at that point. But with, yeah. with this came some really nasty things: noses removed and fingers and arms. Yeah, you got them. deep into to 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 that part. Yeah, and it got worse as Alan was a little crafty on this. This is before Tim is messing around. Tim's messing around with those new charges only five yeah. to ten years. But running, but I so. can understand that that because it it adds fun because to be honest, D and D in general is kind of flavorless in when it comes to combat. It's not yeah. spicy and and gritty in that sense. It's very very clean, artificial, just rules and some numbers, and that's it. So 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 this adds more story and flavor and stuff to it. So it's very tempting and 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 D and D is that that's a, a piece that is missing from D and D. I think deliberately it was not. It was meant to be. It was like war game damage. So, just right. yeah. So there are spells that start appearing in the game. Now, some of them are in Dragon, some of them are in uh, Great Net Spellbook, and one of the, the big one that offset this is in Player's Option Book. So let's go back to that. That was the big change. And this is a, uh, along with Death's Door, this is the other third level base spell that almost every priest will take one or the other of, and that is called Repair Injury, and that's in our game. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if we're the only ones using it, but it is a necro- it's under necromantic, so it goes under the necromantic thing. So healer, mm-hmm. if you have healing sphere, you're not getting this. You have to have necromantic. Yeah. And it says here, repair injury is intended for use in campaigns featuring the critical hit or critical strike rules. So it just Ooh. so happens we're using the old, because you know, there's critical mm-hmm. strike rules in the player's option book. Um, yeah. And so you can do it as a normal healing for 1 day 10 plus 1, or it'll repair a broken bone, split knee... It won't, like fingers, it won't fix that, but it'll fix like, you know, uh, you get mm-hmm. your ripped shoulder out for a fumble, uh, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the mechanics um, thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a great spell. We have them in our, we've always had this uh, in the game. So this, this spell kind of took over for us and it's a staple to this day. Now there's other spells that are, are not as well known. Vampiric Touch is the number one. It, I, necromancers have it in my game and a lot of evil priests like I yeah. use priests it's a crossover because that's necromantic as well but yeah. we come here and there are all some little tidbits here and there in whoops uh, ah, blah, 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 blah. while you I think Sidorin 77 have a good point that, that 5e is not greedy enough that it's it's kind of you just back up on we'll let, we should keep that we remember that because we should talk about these rest and recovery rules. Uh, lit- Five E is like yeah. the old A team. I didn't realize yeah. that Curtis that that's who that was. Ah, oh, why didn't yeah. you just say hey, it's Brett, man? Mm-hmm. You should have said that. That's yeah. awesome, Curtis. Yeah. All right, so second level. This is from Great Net Spellbook, and it's in our ne- Necromancers only. It's called Wound Closure. 
So mm -hmm. this spell closes the wound of the recipient to prevent bleeding and infection, incidentally curing one die four points of damage. Just it's an incidental effect. So thanks, Zump. Single casting and will close all the victim's wounds, but not but further application is, is possible to increase the healing effect. The spell can be used on corpses to disguise the cause of death, but it does not work on non corporal or extra planar entities. There you go. So uh, in one of the footprints, um mm -hmm. you know, magazines, um they have a spell that is a ranged bandaging where you can cast it and it basically wraps up and, and it's like a, you know, pressure dressing on something. Right. So you can do it from a distance, you know, <laughs> but that's in our game. Not that way, but there's a, there's a way player's handbook. Second edition has a spell that changed the, the game for us for certain very limited healers. Yes. And evil priests, especially and necromancers would touch and that is what spell, Tim? Spectral hand. Spectral hand. The spectral hand. You've seen that all the time with the necromancer. Mm -hmm. It flies out, and they're 200 feet away, and the spectral hand's doing touch spells on people at range. Now, you it did, during this era of evolution in the game, there is one class of priests, besides Ayus, besides in a role, that is a player character healing class that gets them. Anyone want to guess? Not you, Tim. Which deity gets spectral hand that they can play her character? Yeah, look at that, Chris. Boom, Ouija. Yep. The Ouija, the Ouija priests have this ability. They can heal at range. They just stand back and let the spectral hand go around. Boop, 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 boop. And that includes repair injury. That includes death's door, touch spells. Any touch spell, yeah. Any touch spell of up to four, third or fourth level. I think it's third. I think. So yes. So right. yep. Yeah. This the what I was talking about was is is, is like a. There's a melee. Someone's been cut down. You're a low level guy. You you can cast the spell that at least keep them from bleeding out. Mm -hmm. It's not as effective. It's not as useful as spectral hand. <laughs> right. So spectral hand's a great spell. The vampiric touch. I do that all the time on the uh, with evil priests. Boom, and you know that's die six per every other level. It's nasty uh, through that spectral hand spell. Now, what if a spectral hand bumps into a minor globe? It's dispelled. No. If it goes into it, it's it'll not be just spelled. It can't. It just it can't go into it. Some of the minor globe wand can't be affected by it. Yeah. it doesn't dispel it. it. That keeps you. Uh, that keeps you away. It doesn't destroy the spell. Like for example, the fireball goes off around you, but you just don't get affected by it. It's a good. Good question, though. All right. So that is another thing. Other things that uh, appear. Um, a lot of these are third edition, but. There was a strength. Strength is a first level spell. A mage spell appears in Great Nut Spellbook called Constitution. It's the same as a strength spell, except it's giving you con points to raise your ability, and that lasts an hour per level, just like a strength spell does. So that appears. Um, now, I, I, wanna, yep. I was thinking about this earlier. I wanna, mm -hmm. When you do like um, expel this, uh, dispel exhaustion, yep. when you do Pay like, me. if you do a spell that temporarily raises your constitution, you get temporary hit points, and your damage. What happens when that spell goes away? Does that mean all that damage that you've accrued is now moved on to your regular set? No, it just goes down. It's like aid. It goes down. So say you here's say you're a fighter with 100 hit points. You're down to 30. The spell exhaustion brings you up to 65, right? Because you have 70 off. Right, 65. but I'll drop to 30 when the spell's done. Right, but if you take 32 points of damage in that time, you drop three points down to 30. That comes off first, just like aid. Yep. But aren't you taking damage? That's just no. The mind is a powerful thing. I think it's better to do the other one. So then it's like no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, you always they'll, take. They'll you die always... afterwards unless yeah. you get them help. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's That'll... but is it. Yeah, but it's interesting. In third edition, you 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 put in real hard rules for temporary hit points. You take when you take damage, you always take off the temporary hit points it's first. It's the spell you do for your henchmen, yeah. your hirelings. Mm -hmm. It's the spell yeah. your armed guy. Go fight, guys! You're good. I've healed you. And mm -hmm. then you know that uh oh, yep. it's probably gonna. Yep, Jim, it's a great, later. it's a great one. Yeah. So, uh, Rich, uh, we use uh, we use uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I just put system shocks on 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 cutting when limbs get cut off. Another spell that appears, which is kind of like a useful spell. It's fourth level. 
Um, uh, um, uh, it's called Arnvid's Unseen Limbs. And I'm not sure, Ed said someone wrote it for him. I don't think Ed wrote it himself. It's in one of the, it's one of the, one of the dragons. And that, that allows you to put, put it on a fake leg or arm for a while. Like it's actually there. So if someone gets a leg cut off, uh, a mage can actually, uh, if they have that spell, can actually have you, so you're functioning during the adventure. So I love the illusion spell. It makes you think you're healed. Yes, we talked about that, Amy. Dispel Exhaustion. That was one of the early, because it's in the early, it's in the original player's handbook. Absolutely, we discussed that. So uh, Arvin's Unseed Limb is one. All right. Um, we still, even though we're going through editions, we still haven't done first edition stuff yet. Because remember, we do everything in first, second edition. So there's still stuff to come in our game, but this is where we are at this point. Necromancers are doing a lot of stuff out there, usually bad. Priests of Ayus are doing bad things, but there's, there's especially Priests of Paler, Heronius, and they're all doing good things. A lot of them have really cool, uh, really cool spells. I want to note one thing, and this was a personal thing. I took a little heat from my guys, but too bad. <laughs> I'm going to show you something. And the first time I ever saw this spell was in um, Icewind Dale, the computer game, and Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, I don't think it was in Baldur's Gate, but it was in those two computer games. I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is cool. Oh, my God, I don't want this in my game. Because I, I, I don't want priests and clerks just being healing factories. So if you go under healing here, there's a spell, Cure Moderate Runes. Does that exist in my game, Tim? I don't think so. No. It's like die eight plus one. And I'm like, I don't need another healing spell. I have a uh, cure moderate wounds. That's actually a magic user spell. What's that? You have a, I have a magic user spell. That's heal cure moderate wounds, but it's like, you know, it's using magic to do it. And it's using that what? pseudo magic science to do it rather than a deities. What, um, is it a specialty mage, or is it just a regular? Well, I mean, you have to find it. It's not. Oh, okay. just yeah, it's, it's not. It's not just oh, readily available. It's cool. a second level. So the found of the So yeah, uh, there's always life drinking and and but, yeah, sort of life uh, stealings which drain hit points. Yep. Go ahead, Anna. I was say one of the interesting things that happened in fourth edition that I think a, a lot of people didn't like was that then you introduced uh, first like second wind that you can kind of get points back so to speak but you also limit the amount of just because you had a cleric or let's say the party consisted of a whole bunch of clerics they could basically get unlimited amount of of, of healing you still couldn't heal more than a certain amount the, your hit dice per, per per day so to speak between rests and stuff so so you limited the amount of healing you could receive for, and 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 that was one of the the interesting but that was basically because they fourth edition was seen as a, a competitor to video games, massive like oh. World World of Warcraft and stuff. So, so you got a very kind of mechanistic look at at fourth edition all of a sudden again, so to speak. It was back to basics in that sense, but instead of war gaming, it was video gaming that was the the inspiration, and you got a very me mechanistic kind of look at the rules and stuff. So, so fourth edition had a a different view, and it's kind of interesting to see how the different editions have tried to solve problems different problems from different perspectives over the years so right and there's and always you, yeah. some kind of yeah hey celtic there's yeah. always an issue that needs to be addressed and it happens yeah. a lot mm -hmm. yep. uh, uh, in the game um so some other great spells that can heal in this era that appear some of them are priest of ayu spells and i use the evil like blood gloat Hey, hey James, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm I'm uh, I have to step away and pick up my son. All right, uh, see you in a couple minutes. A yeah. group. Just leave yourself and blank then, uh, in the background. Yeah, just leave right. it on. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll Thank see you. Little, all right, see you in a little bit. Blood gloat was there. Um, another spell um, that appears in a player's option book, uh, which allows re regeneration or acting is trollish fortitude. I made that uh, another spell that necromancers only get. It's like six level necromancer. It, it allows you to regenerate, and if your limbs get cut off, they still fight. Um, Great Net Spellbook um, has spells that are popping up like crazy at this point from the necromancer world uh, mm -hmm. uh, that we use. Well, that's uh, I'm going to share that with. But you. it's also understandable because there was yeah. a lot of, of gritty kind of cool stuff, story related things that. 
that wasn't in the books because, well, you have to realize it was after the 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 the, the craze of <laughs> demonic <laughs> and, right. and stuff like that. So they they they've written a lot of that out of the game early on, and then people wanted it back in. So yeah, there's some really cool ones here. Um, well, flesh blocks is kind of interesting. Uh, do I have troll? Um, I think Graph Flesh is actually uh, not in here because it's in another spell book. So we added a whole bunch of spells that are in a necromantic world. Mm -hmm. I don't see a problem with you taking a lot of those spells that are necromantic for necromancers as and adding them to your evil priests. Uh, and a lot of them are like spell. Like, I don't uh, see much of a difference exchange. between a necromancer and an evil priest right. in, in, when it comes to what they can do. I, yeah. I, I see very... It's to me, to, in, in my view, it's simply who who provides you with knowledge of doing it and the powers of doing it. Either you figure out how it, the world works and you do it, then you're a necromancer, or some power of some sort tells you right. how to do it and give you do it. Then you're a, a, an evil cult leader priest, so to speak. You use it divine, but the outcome of what you actually do is very much similar, so to speak. True. Uh, one, yeah, one's but that's just by my, deity, my way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. one's imbued by themselves studying the shaman form of uh, the shaman from Isle of Dread or necromancers might not be evil. That's an interesting trope. There have always been like the white necromancer or the non evil necromancer, and, and that is definitely a route you can go if you if you want to have them in your campaign or in your games. That's definitely a, a viable way of, 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 of doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I try to adopt the healing herbs rules from. So, Rasko, almost there. Almost there. So, after after second edition, a lot of other stuff gets thrown at us. As I'm, I'm taking um, ideas from my players, we're adding classes, where I add a, a little bit. I'm waiting for a raid from... from uh, when, when Blue Box raids in, I'm going to share the last thing here. So let me see if I got players in book third edition. I probably didn't put it up here, and that's that's going to annoy yeah. me. While well, you're looking at it, thinking when you have necromancy, I can think of let's say you want to animate old bones and and use them for for various purposes. That might not be necessarily evil. You might even get the the permission of the owner of the bones before they die. That that please do that or or something. So 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 I can see thematically that might be a possible way to to do it. So not not by design, not every case of undeath is evil. No. And and I can see a ghost coming back just to write something wrong that doesn't necessarily have to be evil. We've heard about the good lich, for instance, and, and stuff. So so there are definitely reasons for necromancy that is not evil. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of variables in, in that book. It's a great, yeah. great book. It's one of the toughest ones to find in an original copy is that book. Um, yeah, so. and here you come to to third edition. Yay, yep. Mm -hmm. So this is it for me pulling stuff from previous mm -hmm. editions. Third edition, some spells come to mind in here that are like, wow, this is a great spell. Um, there are spells in here... Um, to enhance druid when they're mm -hmm. in druid form ability like magic fang we've added we added uh searing lights in here we added um uh, sound burst but there's one is in, in particular that i that we really i liked for our game uh and now uh let me see if i'm gonna be able to find it uh, these are not in um these are not in they're in alphabetical order right they're no longer so let me f go to h There it is. So it's called heal, it's Healing Circle, right? So Healing Circle is, I think, um, the, the Jakendor setting is animate skeletons producing food following a plague that killed lots of workers. Well, another one with that. I mean, you got zombies in Greyhawk cleaning the sewers, right? <laughs> so you do what you got to do. Healing Circle is a spell, and I'm thinking to myself, how do I incorporate this in the game? First of all, I don't want to give it to every clerk in the world. So we give it to, you have to have major sphere of healing. It's going to be one of those spells that's going to get added into the spheres from the second edition. So if you have a healing of a sphere of major, Paylor, Heronius, I think does, Tractarian, I think does, 
um, you're going to be able to cast this because this spell, um, and we it's all living allies, not dead creatures within a 20-foot radius burst centered on you. Uh, we, we've made it fourth level, so seventh level priest can cast it. Uh, it's friend or foe, though. You can't choose who, who gets it. So we limit it to whoever, if you cast it in combat, to whoever's around you in that area of effect. Out of combat, we allow 10 individuals maximum, including yourself, to take a healing circle spell. So you may go, oh, what's that spell? Well, that's that's what this is at third um, in third edition that we've back converted back to 1E, e, 2E. Probably the biggest change uh, of that. Also, at this point, we're we're adding in feats into our proficiency system. Now, none of them enhance healing, but some of them enhance duration. So, uh, so there could be that, that could that could be an effect here. Let me see about some questions here. Asking for a friend. What? What? Yeah. Wait a minute. What's would a mortician be considered a dabbler of the necromantic arts and maybe in a fancy setting a practitioner could be level good? Maybe if he has spell capability, uh, Patrick. Right for a necromancer. I mean, we have, uh, like, if you looked right here, look what I showed you. Look at the first spell. Um, did I close that out? I probably closed it out. Ah, damn. I closed it out. Dumb me. Give me one second. I shouldn't be looking at that. Don't look at that. Look at that very first spell. What's that called, uh, Patrick, for first edition uh, um, Necromancer? Autopsy. <laughs> right? There's one that's called Last Image. So when they're dying, they show you what they saw last. So, yeah, absolutely. You could turn a necromancer into a mortician or type or an investigator. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Good question. Uh, Dale, so it might be a crazy question, but what about healing potions? They're often found as treasure, but what evil care? Yes, of course they can use healing potions. Evil, evil, sure. We haven't gotten to... Hey, Stronghold, good to see you. Gary Khan... We haven't gotten to alchemy and herbs yet and things like that. We're, we're, we're getting there, trust me. So when 3rd edition comes out, we have added we add healing circle. It's really the only spell we add that really has a bunch of healing. Now we added um, all the like bull strength spell. Right? That that comes in. And uh, what's, the, what, uh, what's the one that... Uh, endur endurance. Endurance, which gives you higher con as well. The priest can cast now. But you have to get... You have to have certain... Um, is it necromantic? I forget. It's in it's in a certain sphere, so you can cast them at off your hit points based on your con. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, but at this point, I'm not touching fourth or fifth. But things start coming, Anna. Things start coming. You know how you you're never satisfied mm -hmm. with your game, so things start coming at this point here. Let's see. Interesting. Yep. Doing a modern autopsies. Oh, putting dead bodies. Yep. Interesting. CC makes a single spell allows you to pick one ability to boost. Cool. All right. So we're going to come here and we're going to go to. Let me close that out for one second. Um, here. So it always said in first edition, like I think it even says it in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah, there's going to be like stuff like witches and warlocks. And uh, we're like, where the hell are they? Right? They never appear. Well, in in third edition, you got all the sorts of, of of classes and stuff, and and then in fifth edition as well, and fourth edition also had a lot of, of weird classes. Just like Pathfinder have had witches and 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 warlocks and various other classes. There were like over 60, 70, or I think maybe even hundred if you add third party classes in, in Pathfinder one, there was well over a hundred. I think there was like almost seventy officially published nice. classes in, in Pathfinder one. And sure third that... edition D D was like crazy. So so you I'm had sure all of that them. many yeah. in castles and crusades now. Uh, oh Rob, yeah. yeah. Rob, do you know how many there are? Yeah. Uh, Phantom or anyone else who plays CNC, uh, but you're, you're close to that many. Um, so uh, we're going to yeah. come here. Uh, so I got to have this guy on. I still have not Timothy Brandon. So how many classes are in CNC right now? Counting all the supplemental books. Well, yeah, if they're still, if they're publishing a book, they're official. Yeah, lots. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm like, screw it. Too many. Yep. <laughs> Let's make a witch. You have that. We've always used witches as NPCs, like Death Masters, right? Because they appear in like what's it? Uh, multiple dragons, but Dragon One Hundred Six has a really nasty one. Uh, but I want to make them. I want to make them into a PC class that could be played. So I get this Timothy Brandon. I find this Timothy Brandon book. It's first edition. I'm like, great. 
So I can utilize this and merge this in with other stuff. It is, Michael. It is. And I, I know I've recommended them multiple times. So and this is copyright 2012, and this is in first edition. I think he's done all the way through fourth. I don't think he's ever done fifth. Probably 265. That's a funny deal. We're going to go to page seven here. So they get their own spells, right? You'll see, you'll see a lot of Elmore pictures here. You must get an approval mm -hmm. permission for Elmore's. But let's go right here. It's page part two, the witch class. So we're going to go under special abilities. Right, it's going to give you stuff here, uh, um, and here it is. And this is where Rich is the first time we're getting to this point. Right here, this paragraph. All witches are knowledgeable in the use of herbs. A witch of second level or greater can make a healing ointment, balm, or poultice out of local herbs. The witch needs to make an intelligence check to find the herbs and a wisdom check to make the herbs into a useful balm. The balms heal one day four plus. There's blue box. Excellent. Let me get. Uh, good to see you guys. Hello. Everyone, sit tight. I want to do a special little sneak peek for a upcoming uh, publication here. It's good to see you all. We also have a giveaway, uh, and once again, I'm going to try. It, it, it got to be in the continental U.S. So I'm going to try to give away one of these. Where'd they go? Again, uh, if not, I'll give you a Troller Game gift certificates. But the, the one of these two. Return to uh, Expedition to Ru Ruin Castle Ravenloft or Expedition to Dean Webb Pits. The and they were third edition books. They're really cool. Hardbacks. Thank you, Patrick. Yes. Oh, we got a sneak peek coming. Yes. 36 classes and some races. Cool. And thank you so very much for coming on. All right. So, yeah. And we, we get here. And these bombs here, 1-day 4 plus half the witch's level. So if they're 8th level, it's 1-day 4 plus 4. All right. And they can make three of these doses, but they can only do a, a, each one on one person. Can only take the benefit of it one such bomb per day, and that's how it's limited. So this is the first time we saw the healing of the ointments and the herbs, and that led to, well, what else can we do? We ha always had the barbarians do it with their first aid, right? Um, and then the trances from monks and the trances from the halfling guardians. So why can't we do this? with other classes. And I said, uh, I said to them all, I said, I don't want something. I don't want every class doing this. Cause then it's going to feel like that fourth edition shit that's going on. Right now. I know CNC has a band. It's a bandage factory. Correct. I know there's a lot of bandages and CNC you can use. All right. So be it, but a bandage uh, factory. That's... Yeah. Right. Cause yeah, everyone mm -hmm. can use bandages. Uh, correct. Yeah. See, everyone said yes. in, in CNC and I'm not, I don't want to do that. So what are we going to do? Does anyone know? What we do. Have you put in a medicine skill or healing skill or, or like first aid skill or something yes. like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to show you where it is. So, Tim, um, what is your thought on the Timothy Brown and first edition witch as opposed to the witch in Dungeon Dragon 106? That's where we that's where we're talking about now. Um. Which I one? like it. I like the flavor of it. Yep. I I actually use both. I actually use another version as well from uh, Footprints. Depending on Footprints has one too. Yes. Yeah. It, depending on uh, the tradition from which that person comes, you know, I like to have it where you can't put witches in a box. Right. But this is where we start off with. Well, are we going to do this? Are we going to bring in her herbs? Are we going to bring in more first aid into the game? But I am, you know, control freak. I don't want every single character being able to do this. I just don't. I don't. I don't want that. So, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? And Bill, oh. is, yeah, good. There's way the way you control that is herbs have to be fresh. They're seasonal and regional. So therefore, there's a there's a limiting factor of what's available. I mean, how much how much how many who can go down to the rainforest to get those healing herbs well, that that's you the have point. available? That's the point. Or the polar regions in the midwinter, no. meaning yeah. you can't find them. Yep. Yeah. Brett, it's good to see you. The, the point is I'm not letting every single person in the world go herb hunting all the time because you know right. the abuse that's coming. What you should do, though, Jay, is you should let them spend their money buying herbs mm -hmm. that when they put them on, they find out that was yeah. oregano, you know, instead of the real deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, right. Like, keep well, but weed. you should be – a wizard should be able to – or the spellcaster should be able to detect that at purchase, so to speak. They should see if it's the real thing or not. I don't. Hey, you want to buy? You want yeah. my healing stuff? Buy potions, because I can jack the price way up on you. It's <laughs> sucking money out, which I do. I do all the time. So here it is. 
The answer to everything, and this is going to be in the Free Secret box set, we're going to call it the Magister there, is Bill creates, rips off right from Game of Thrones, rips off, rips off uh, the Maester class. Right? The Maester class has what are called um, two different types of abilities. They have a, um, an, an, academic, an academic skill and an advanced study skill. With that, here comes the anatomy skill, advanced study skill, anatomy. Skilled in the healing arts, they can heal damage done at a rate of 1 die 4 plus 1 hit point per level. This work takes one turn and must immediately follow end of combat. Right? They can also set and repair injuries that require magic, but they take natural time to heal, such as broken bones, etc. They're doing the, ma the, the master first mm -hmm. aid. They're, they have the master first aid skill. Um, so, uh, but they only do it on one person after a fight because they got to spend a turn doing it. And just like the bandage thing in CNC, you just don't have, you know, at that point, you can't go back to it. So they can do one individual. And normally it's die four plus one hit point per level. So if they're seventh level and maester skill, die four plus seven after a fight. It's really not worth doing it on anybody unless they have a crit, somebody with a broken bone or somebody with something, you know, real bad. Well, not necessarily. Say so you have first level characters. <laughs> well, if you're like, it probably is a broken bone. <laughs> <laughs> Notice this also here. They can take anatomy for damage. They can also choose instead of healing to use their knowledge of anatomy because they have to take it as a separate, almost a reverse, to cause more damage at the rate of one hit point per three levels when using missile and melee weapons. So a lot of multi-class fighter maesters do this. So, love the class. Needed to be an, an adventure. Thank you. And like I said, Bill, Bill the Master Crafters on. He's the one that created this. Um, and I've tweaked it a little why, bit. Why try to slit your throat when I can just poke your breakthrough <laughs> artery in your armpit so surgically and do more damage? That's right, Necromantic. One time it can be in one person. So, this is our super. This, um, number one, eliminates everyone doing. I don't want everyone being a healing. I, I don't want fourth edition. I saw what happened. For everyone, it's like playing World of Warcraft. I don't want that. I want a limited. We have, and we're going through all the different ways and all the different abilities that we have out in the game to heal, right? And with the witches' poultices, and with first aid from certain classes, and self healing, and spells from priests, and potions, and now the poultices have to be fresh. Yeah, but the witch is going to go look for them, right? Uh, have you ever told a witch you haven't, you can't find them? Ever? Well, they make them. I'm just saying, have you ever told a witch, oh, no, you can't find your herbs today to do make poultices? I want you to be God honest, true. See, he, the answer is no. I make them do, they have, to, they have to research it well in advance. They have to have it ready ahead of time. They're not going to build one on the way. I allow. I allow. Because it, to, cause it I, involves it, it involves molds. It involves mercury. It involves I, I something. It. I that, but if you're in a forest setting, I'm gonna let them go out at night and uh, and recover and, and, and attempt to find them. That's why you make the checks. I just am telling you that. You've then they never have to told, prepare it. I understand that we are working semantics here. You've never told a witch no. I, you can't come with them. I don't believe that's true. Yeah. I've never. It's never even come up. No, please. Hardly ever, hardly ever use game. herbs. Never has it happened. So, yeah, uh, it's okay. We're, we're arguing semantics. I don't really have, I only had one witch and she never really messed with that too much. Okay. One right. character, player character was a witch. She uh, was too busy being offensive then. <laughs> Which is okay. It's just perfectly fine. But it's it's a part of the, and from that we've said, look, the maester class, it, you have to multi-class, fighter, cleric, thief, or mage. So you're not getting any specialization. You're not getting any of the other special abilities of the classes. You're just getting a base class. There, there is also a, um, a specialist class. It's in one of the second edition blue books, Sages and Specialists or something. There's a healer in there, and it's right. it's a non-magical sort of type of healer also. Okay. But, no, yeah, and, and I thought that this was a little bit better than that for our game. Right. Well, I, this has more options. You're not just a healer. You 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 have you're the academic. So you more like the yeah. the old world doctor, as in PhD doctor. You know, as as in who's going to want to play that in our game? No, you are. That's what a maester is. They're part of the intelligentsia. They're, they're right. That's what they are okay, but right. They're no, not just the healer. They are right. Who, uh, who's going to play a educated. straight? Who's going to play a straight class maester in a game? 
I I would try it. No, you wouldn't. You get bored. You get bored out of your mind playing your scout now. I don't get bored out of my mind. You just have to. You just have to let more other things happen. <laughs> you got to let my creativity run wild. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. So uh, the witch finds ten rooms and spices, but cannot find the eleventh. Yeah, well, Sam. <laughs> they get three stinking poultices. It's not like they're getting a hundred. King's foil is a weed. There you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So just note. Also. Scroll wise, they can take if they take these abilities, they can take scrolls of classes as an ability. So they can take clerical scrolls, they can take necromancer scrolls, which is kind of cool too. So just I like it. it. It's like a scholar. They're scholars. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we made it so they're not a cloistered one that you right. can multi class for scholar adventurers yep. or explorers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Quickie break. I like it. Quickie break. Let's let Les, are you there still? So Les was kind enough to make something for me. And I'm only gonna share the first paragraph. Ooh. The the white rose of the Soul Imperium. Uh -huh. If we all remember in the Po Marsh, in the Twisted Forest, there are these white roses growing all over the place. Uh, the only place they grow besides in the far western reaches of the Sea of Dust. We want well. I, I said to Les, I said, Les, I'd love lore on this. And Les said, No problem, Jay. I'm going to write up the lore for you. So it is a pretty long article there. We're going to scroll through because this is going to be in one of our future publications, Visions, or whichever publication. But let's just talk about the first paragraph on this. So, let's say, look, for me who asked for it, which is thank you for that. Sometimes called the Imperial Rose, the right white rose of the Soul Imperium lingers in the architecture and fashion of the Flannus. Wherever descendants of the great houses and mages of power settled and had significant historical influence, stem and bloom embellished simple bodices and appliques of satin or velvet. Craftsmen and steel and precious metals worked the rose pattern into weapons and household wares. Skilled hands wove the design of ancient tapestries and carpets adorning wealthy walls in Keyland and Safeton and Harby, the founding families ordered the architects to incorporate the rose into columns and friezes. Did I say that right? Uh, even the sea princes are said to value uh, chalices etched with the images of the rose held between a pair of sea lions, the waves of Jekyll Bay reaching for the flowers, sepals. So there you go. And, and there's a whole bunch of background information on, mm -hmm. on these, on how they came to be. Um, you know, they're only found in two places in the entire Flannes by lore. The lore is in Greyhawk Adventures under the Twisted Forest, and we ran a venture just recently in there where they, these white roses were all over the place. So is, it, it, is it a symbol, or is it an actual plant? It's an actual, it's an actual plant. Because uh, a lot of that just shows that the plant's significant culturally, mm -hmm. right? Both Tim, as Tim says, as Les says, both. Yes. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, yeah, uh, never inhaled. I never, I don't want to go beyond this because I don't, because Les wrote this up for publication. Just, just note, I really appreciate Les doing this. It's really cool. Note, it'll be out in a future publication and you all get to share it. Okay. Thank Oblivion you. Oblivion so Seeker. Yes. A, a wonderful, wonderful job with that. I wanted to give him some credit while we had a large audience on showing that. All right. So. Another thing we've added for the Maester, also for witches, that wit the Timothy Brennan witch allows us as well, is this. Alchemy, which is probably the worst written up thing in all the history of D&D. Of &D. Maybe old psionics. Yeah, okay, and, uh, you're right. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the old psionics and the the uh, the grappling rules are are are, yeah, are contenders you're right on that for that. Too. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Th those two are, are the the other. Those are the trifecta of worst written yeah. rules for D and D. I think. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of psionics, but I had some really. I, re I had a real exciting psionist versus a psionics char a character that had psionics versus an NPC or enemy that had psionics, and yeah. so everybody was like. Because they were doing psychic crush on each other to see who would win. So it was like, but I didn't bring my alchemy uh, reference book here. I got like one, two. But I if everyone seven. has it, it gets tiring. But to me, it's 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 a little bit like, but not the alchemy. Unnecessarily add on because alchemy, in my opinion, yep. old medieval alchemy was magic in 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 fantasy. Like so me. so alchemy to me, it's like superfluous. Yeah. You don't really need it. It's just. Ah. 
yeah some cultures can call magic alchemy or whatever so yeah well i i like i think there's kind of a missing niche in D D as far as the a real alchemist would be like the pharmacist you know the the guy yeah. who would create the medicine from herbs to make it where they would give stuff to you in the in the yeah. more civilized areas but then somebody had to make soap an alchemist would make soap i mean who's doing yeah. that <laughs> Who knows how to do that? Yeah, but to me, it's like D and D is the world where alchemy actually works. It's true, meaning it it actually does work, so to speak. So, so that's why why it's kind of weird that that the superstition is real, and then you have a, another part of the 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 game where the superstition still exists as a superstition kind of thing, and 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 kind of works. But but on the other hand, you want all sorts of flavors. There's nothing wrong with having it. It's just that to me, it seems like you two things doing the same thing kind of thing so when we saw that like you know bill said we really don't have a way to take all the stuff you can get from that remember in the dungeon master's guide there's a list of ingredients yeah. and there's future ones that have other lists so we have and i forgot that's one book i forgot to bring up a binder mm -hmm. where we have multiple multiple ones um we wanted to. We've always wanted to get that crafting into the game of alchemists, and so the maester is where that goes, along with the witch. Yeah. They're the two classes that can actually do alchemy. You got to take the skill in the game, and so just note that. Go An ahead. alchemist is a great patron. He needs yeah. someone to get some parts, some components for his stuff. So he, for a new party or adventuring party, a a wealthy, well-to-do alchemist wants to send them out to get the various difficult to get things, you know, Hey, we need some trolls blood. You're going to have to get us some of that. <laughs> can you, can you accomplish a lot of really cool stuff with alchemy or is it just poor yeah. man's magic or, or no, we're talking and we're not, it's not really bomb making, but and, and they're on the tables are like, um, Oh man. Anyone give me a page in dungeon master's guide that the alchemist, uh, uh, um, and I'll bring that up. Someone give me a page number for the uh, where the alchemy sheet is, and I can show everyone that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if I can. The DMG. It. Yeah, DMG first edition. Because uh, I don't remember. It's a 104. I'm guessing. Let me make sure if I have it in my subfolder. Yeah, just someone look it up here. Yeah, DMG. Oh, they it's actually in the appendixes too. I think. Maybe not. Yeah, and so and there's you know the potion missability tables in there. There's all sorts of fun things, but there's all these cool things about well, this is uh you know uh, you need this and this to make this potion. You know all the potions that are listed in the book, and so um, there's a book about alchemists. Yeah, so uh, Hold I don't. On. I don't Hold on. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to scroll I'm through. Searching for alchemy. One sixteen. Oh, I was close. Thank you, Tim. That's what the. Uh, Index it so you can all see this list. Look, yep. I, there we go. So here, here we go. To make all these are these are these are potions that are in the Dungeon Master's gu uh, Guide for Magic. Here's what you need uh, as one of the components to make them, right? And everyone's trying to get the you know. Oh my God, I need uh, I need Dragon Blood and Treant Sap or Elf Blood to make longevity potions. So I'm gonna kill plenty Drell. of Elf Blood around. Plenty of Elf Blood. Yeah. So uh, you know, and here's here's a list. This is not uh, by means. Um, well. They have a good one like clairvoyance. Any an eye from an animal with keen sight. That's doable for a party. Yeah. So this was, it was kind of uh, cool to have this, and there's extra other lists, and we just wanted. Uh, uh, once again, it's another thing um, to expand on the game to add a little, uh, but, little bit. But more. But then they're it. kind of alchemy is potion making. Yeah. 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 Which is that's that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And Make a potion. I yeah. I have. Uh, un, un, unspecified, unsolidified versions of things alchemists can do, you know, where you you can take potions and get them reduced down to a pill. What? You know, what is it? Really? A potion reduced down to, it's been dehydrated and all that. So you take it, it's a delayed, ref you know, oh, it'll be delayed. Or things that contain a spell so that when you break it, the spell will go off, or when you imbibe it or drink it, it'll. It's like yeah, but that you can still do miscibility if you take two different pills. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, at the same time, sure. Do they still mix? Yes. So the miscibility table is always one of my favorites, and this just adds something where you're making potions to the game instead of buying them all the time. Once again, we're talking maesters and witches only. So when my you. sons guys got captured in L one. Uh, the evil evil magic user was practi- was was giving them two potions at the same time for experimenting. <laughs> well, I love that. <laughs> I kept rolling. Boom! Blow up. Back no, forward. no blowing up. N- nothing really worked. Longevity, and then you got elixirs of use that came up, and all sorts of other wonderful things. Um, at that point, that gave you uh bonuses. But just note, so that's something else we added in was a way to finally, and you know, uh, 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 there's bonuses if you have a al- special alchemical equipment, you got to have a lab somewhere. Um, when we first did the Village of Hamlet redo, uh, we had a, um, we uh, there's that abandoned house that's in the back. They took that over and they made that into an alchemy lab, which was kind of cool at that time. And that was at the old house, so that was a while ago, but still. So, yeah, the maester gave you that ability uh, as well. You could do that. Um, and so, uh, you know, something else neat in the game. Um, some other things I want to mention. Bill brought this up. Uh, he's going to give a big, Bill gave a big, uh, right, Bill? A big good job for this. And let me bring it up. I'm going to. Give me one second. I, I like the Warhammer Alchemist. Visions of Greyhawk 2. All right. And we're going to go. We're going to go down to number. We're going to go to Norker's page 14. Rennie Wise Woman. So. This is good if you're going to go in this realm in your games. This is brand new. And something you can add into your game here. And the, their abilities here. The Rennie Wise Woman. Um, so they have, um, they have some abilities, uh, here that allow healing outs, uh, you know, uh, non-magical healing. Um, so let's see here. Uh, where is it in here? <laughs> Guidance weapons permitted. Must be female. Wise woman can't turn to healing spells do not require verbal components, but do require material components. Clean water, herbs, bandages. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a more of a realistic, you know, they're, they're using the physical aspect of, of, of it to, to do the spell. So I like the rule of creating, I like the rules in creating a new spells in the DMG. Yeah, there's a lot of great, the, the, the original Dungeon Master's got, got shit so everywhere. They don't use spells or magic. They just have, some uh, sort they of... do, but it's more in a, uh, it looks more in a realistic, right? Look, it says here minor access to healing. So they can only do limited healing. For the, for, for the Rennie like that one Star Trek episode one of the original Star Treks where the lady's dancing all over Captain Kirk and she like heals yeah, him yeah because of the Mogatu the Mogatu uh, Venom yeah mm-hmm. nice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah the big the big white ape thing with a yeah. horn mm-hmm. and that's in that's in the lower decks too the Mogatu yes that's where I was thinking it most recently yeah absolutely so the another Mogatu reserves yep so, uh, like cl- clerks and druids of other cultures, the wise women perform v- uh, vital rituals for their people, baptisms, you know. So, basically, midwife there as well. So, you got a lot of options here, but they are a they are a healer. So, check it out. and maybe a good way, a good thing to add into your game. I'm not going to add it as a class, but I may have it as NPCs. Sure. So, yep. Sure. Why not? Okay, Anna. What else? What else? Uh, like, what? What are you like uh, considering to add into your, like, uh, healing wise? I was uh, thinking. I was thinking rest and recovery. We haven't talked about a little bit, meaning that part of natural healing that happens between meaning. Mm-hmm. Do you? Do you? Yep. Meaning they they have five e the eight hour full rest or or, or the short rest and and the the uh, the healing surge mechanic from four e and the resting that started in four e and then got its its final shape now in 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 fifth edition I I 
tweaked it a little bit. So I have short rest. You can recover one hit die, so to speak. I mean, you can shake off a little bit of, of uh, damage and, and then you can do an eight hour, meaning a, a so-called full rest. If and, and the way I want to do it, uh, I want to use the, the bloodied, meaning if you take in less than half damage, you b basically heal up full after eight hours because that's basically just recover from fatigue and, and, and shake off the bruises. But if you have more than, than half damage, damage then you 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 use the the hit die mechanic from from 5e so you, you can heal up that so to speak and you recover your spells but in order to heal up if if you lost so you're down to to only a few hit points if you want to to go back to full hit points and stuff then you need to take at least 24 hours in a safe space meaning that you're not interrupted or, or feel threatened or anything like that so so and and you can't cast spells or, or do combat or anything like that in during during it so to speak and if you've taken death saves then then my my intention is to 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 have it that two days of rest per death save so to speak meaning that's when you have broken bones and and are serious critically injured so to speak what when you do it so unless you can have magical healing can bring you back in in a heartbeat so to speak but if you don't have it or don't want to spend it that that that's my so so magic can overcome it but it's a little bit more uh, in my house rules it's a little bit more meaning you need to have a palate some some someone uh, uh, who is who can heal and they are a little bit rarer than in, in standard, meaning you need to have someone with good connections to a good deity in order to do it or use uh, primal magic can heal up to a point, so to speak, meaning druids and rangers and stuff. So primal magic can also heal, not the, re the most powerful. They can bring back uh, things from the dead. That, that you can't do it. You can't. You there is a form of reincarnate where you basically go for the soul and put it in whatever, so to speak. So so you you can do that. That's kind of primitive. Bring it back. But if you really want to bring back someone from the dead, only the the gods can do it, so to speak. So you so, go to the pet cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it's so only so so that is a little bit more. But I I still want I want the game to be grittier, not deadlier or or way more difficult. But I want it to have a little bit of 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 kind of we need to play for this a little bit and if you go into the deep dungeon and that then you might in trouble and one of the they often overlooked meaning you just assume that if you're a cleric or a caster of, of any type of magic that your spells always works so to speak meaning you, you memorize your spell and then you can as a good cleric you can always get more of them but in in my house rules that's not always the case once you memorize the spell it's yours unless there's some special magic or some someone bangs you hard in the head so you might lose all your memories and stuff <laughs> that might mess with it but as long as you have your 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 mental faculties in touch and and in, in good so to speak you have your your abilities still there you can do it but let's say you're a good cleric and you go down into the abyss or the nine hells you can't ask for more magic because you your god off. might not exactly you cut yeah. off your your deity might not you might not be able to 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 pray for more spells or or a wizard is usually better off because magic is magic for them so that usually works better in, in almost every place but they can't heal so so healing magic meaning you get what you have with you and that's it and and even that might not work in the if you go into the palace of of Gerasits or, or or someone really powerful demon lord or something there's a lot of stuff that might not work in 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 there so so magic it not always as reliable as in the standard rules in my campaign and i use and clerics don't heal so so it's yeah, no, kind of they yeah. heal mine either uh, yeah they, I, they have to slaughter other creatures and and steal the life force from them so to speak I, I have a, I can't remember where I, I have this. It's somewhere in my stuff, a spell that basically is using, it's a more magic user science thing where it's, you're using the body's natural ability to heal itself, but you're accelerating yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can only do it so much. And then once you do it, their normal healing rate is not, they can't heal normally for a couple of days or a week, you know, because they've already used all that and it's been accelerated to help them recover immediately yeah. so they have to or they have to consume four times their normal amount of food to replenish all that yeah nutrients that their body there has is rushed. A, there is a spell called accelerated metabolism it's a time yeah. sphere spell isn't it well and also I'm, psionics had a lot of stuff they played around with stuff yeah. like that 
Yeah, yeah, that was the 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 idea because you had psionic healing in in first it edition was, too. Yeah, but it was just so abused. It was yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy rule breaking stuff. So stayed yeah. away from it so much. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in in my college game, I had a, a run in with a deck of many things type thing, and the two half ogre brothers ended up with a couple wishes, so they were like sharing because they're good brothers, and they were the the dumbest people in the party, but they. They wish to have psionics. <laughs> oh, that, 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 so, yeah, uh, yeah, and you, they yeah, were they, great because they were, they were like, yeah. Yeah. and then you mentioned it. But wish was a way you could you could get mad, you can get healed back from from wizards could heal. Limited wish and wish could actually heal you because they yeah, can they, they can imitate any magic spells up to a certain level and stuff. So and so yeah. One of them fancied himself, I am a magician now. I can do you know he could do a couple little stupid yeah. things, you know. But he's like, I'm a very powerful ma magic user. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't read couldn't read or write, but <laughs> so what questions do the audience have? So um note that most critical hits that I have can be fixed by most spells. Now there are a couple on here that have the uh, uh, like the red, the red bar, skull crush, immediate death, and are blunt, for example, and the red means foo bar. Yeah. All right, so I mean that happens occasionally, but um, most of them can be healed by repair injury or well, a heal spell. Multiple weapons are still lethal in most editions. You cut the head off and, and only if you have head. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's but you can always have NPCs have them. But the problem is, that if, if NPCs have them, the player characters might kill the NPC, and then they have. Them. That's so, easy. Yeah. You make an alignment-based weapon. Oh, you make a DNA. You it's go. a DNA coded. It's oh. DNA coded. Yeah, you make it a kind of evil weapon, like you know. Slaughterer is the name of the weapon, and then so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's an easy fix. There you, there you go. Yeah, yep. but I don't, I don't use warble weapons. I like the sharpness swords more to cut limbs mm -hmm. off, and it has a one it has a percentage chance of cutting the head off, but it usually cuts. Uh, the yeah, limb I off. think it, yeah, exactly. You yeah. should work on any body part you you yeah. aim it at, so to speak. So yeah, druids who take damage in animal form still damage when they convert back. So here's the thing: if you read yep. the rule initially in first edition. You you heal when you turn into the animal form, and you heal when you go back into the human form. We said that that was too much, so you only heal when in our game when you go back. But, into but the wasn't human it form. that you between when you shifted form you healed, even if you weren't shifting back, you you can shift from one form to another and right. you heal. Right. I would so be that okay. means I'm, that I'm, it was I'm like okay a, the most powerful heal spell in yeah, the in so. the game. So yeah. Yeah, and that, they yeah, don't I, get them in first edition or seventh level. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that if they if they heal. It's a druid. doesn't matter. Does it really? How do you balance <laughs> healing so that the party has a chance at survival without making them near invincible? Healing does not make your party invincible. It's really difficult to heal during a fight. Mm -hmm. You can have all and the healing in the guys, world. It don't matter if you're in the middle of a give fight. Give it to bad like, guys, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are in screwed. If you're in a fight and you think you're going to get off a cure serious wounds on someone uh, and and and, and freaking uh, you know Colonel Cold's coming on a spellcaster, you know what I mean it's just like you know <laughs> that, that, that's uh, yeah. So it, it, uh, there's also other things you know there's other things you can throw at them, other special abilities, other you know there. Uh, yeah. you know, hence the, why the most the most useful healing thing in an emergency situation is some sort of talisman that does the spell or a ring of spell storing that has it yep, on or a or magic weapon. item that has it those are the best things for combat it's because it because it's kind of an instant you can trigger it and it happens and it, it can't be interrupted uh and and other stuff so that's probably the best yes way. so rob you bring up a good point that's why the special hand healing very rare in the game uh, uh priests are very very powerful because they don't have to touch they touch at range so um all right tim tim answer this question which class is is uh is number one on the target list in, from any from a baddie party in your adventuring group in my game in which, your game which class is number one on the target list all the time well if there's an archer and if not, if there's not an archer, then it would be the magic user or, cl or cleric. Then. Right, spellcaster second to yeah. the archer. Yeah, the archer goes first because the archer will slaughter a lot of spellcasters in in our game because yeah. the one of the archer. Yeah, I think I have the defense for that. I I found it in one of my barbarian things, and it's a I I call it a coyote shield where it's got 
deflect arrow or redirect arrow or whatever. So if they fire, they get to do a save and go ping, so they can actually right back at you. Uh, but you can't have the... every single character have it. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, you know, it's fun. It is fun. My GM is on here. I'm playing a priestess and an archer. Uh, ah, archers are the nasty. Yeah, nasty. So I'm thinking of the Pathfinder spell missing. Uh, uh, Warpwood. Um, cut their bow. Have a thief cut their bowstring. There's a lot of a lot of ways you can defeat the party's archer. At least limit them. How about a dark spell on them? They got to move. You just delayed them a whole round. Um, uh, things like that. Uh, fog. Wall of fog. Wall of fog's good too. Just yeah. put something or put a darkness spell between you and mm -hmm. you know in the hallway. He's got to get up super close now. So you're debilitating their ability to to stay back. There's a lot of ways you can limit their effectiveness. Yeah. And and indoors in my game, I mean a bow is an almost indirect weapon because it fires an arch. So indoors and in forest and stuff, it's much harder because you have to lobby mm -hmm. the them in so they don't work. That's the difference. Crossbows are much more direct fire, but they have very slow rate of fire. So so that's why crossbows is much more of a sniping weapon mm -hmm. that than than a bow is in, in that sense. It takes right. much more skill. And you can skill. lay prone. You can be prone yeah. when you fire mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Um, you that's much harder to do with with it with a with a bow. So and and also a bow is much harder to learn to hit the target. The crossbow is much easier. That's why it's a lot of men at arms and simple soldiers. It was much easier to teach them to use a crossbow than even if the crossbow is more expensive than a bow or at least as expensive, it's still much easier to use and it's much more of a direct fire weapon. You aim at right. the thing and fire. So indoors and and stuff, a crossbow is much okay. better than a bow. But outside on mass, you have a lot of, of archers and you can you can basically get an area of effect, you, so to speak. You yeah. could make a, a give the bad guys an archer mm -hmm. and then have the bad guys have these magic arrows, arrows of healing. So he can shoot his own party and when the arrow hits it doesn't damage but casts a healing spell on him. That yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can you can you can tweak things, but yeah. So 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 missile weapons are not necessarily that super weapon as it it's sometimes portrayed to be. So yeah. So you can you can look at real world meaning meaning I have it that when you shoot a bow, you need to have half the height. If you shoot at a hundred feet, you need fifty feet of clearance in, above you in order for the, the, the arrow to hit the target. Anna, so yeah. to show you how quality that is, aftermath actually has the the stats where they're like you could only shoot mm -hmm. but this far if you're underground with a clearance yeah. because mm -hmm. of that very reason yeah. you have yeah. to be able to yeah up to, up to short range it's it's I, I have a direct but past short range a bow is an indirect fire weapon so yeah. so so up to short range and short range is a hundred feet with with a long bow and what is it 60 50 feet with a short bow and but that's why but bows are cool because you can shoot at really long range but then it's loppy in so to speak so right. so yeah so, so a question from justinius came up about uh would you uh, with a wish spell if you wish someone back would they have to roll a system shock my retort to that is what tim I would say no. No, that, you know, you're missing the joke of the question. How many characters in our campaign, PCs, can cast Wish? I don't know, but my guy came back with a Wish once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, yes. I said I've done one in the last 20 years. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah, but that was fun because he got he got uh, obliterated by crushed the by witch. an earthquake. <laughs> well, the witch. No, we, we let. Uh, um, um, no, no, no. Gala. Even before uh, that, yeah. if you remember, it was it was, it was moving. <laughs> Fell into an earthquake. <coughs> Granting wishes is one thing. Uh, I mean, but yeah, there's a, so uh, we have no characters in the campaign that are, are played regularly that can cast wishes. It's just we don't have any ninth level spell, spell yeah. casters running it, it, around. It depends on how whimsical and how heavy yeah. magic you want right. to have your stuff. That's right. all. Yeah, well, there, we do have something that can cast limited wish. Dream can be cast, um, uh, and some other spells. But yeah. Uh, luck blade ring uh, when they usually don't use them to bring back people they usually use them for a, um, a wish spell for something like this i want to be able to wear three rings on my hands instead of two <laughs> you to wear one oh you you do you use like slot system or or, or yeah, something like that yeah one ring on each hand that's all that functions so they okay you know, I'll, yep. i want a third ring to be able to function on my hand or mm -hmm. 
you know, uh, they, yeah. they, they fencing sure, has that. Yeah, yeah I kind of like them. the five E attunement rules because they are less r yeah. rules messy, so to speak. The third edition, you had the slot mechanic. Pathfinder had the slot mechanic as well. That that you you had certain amount of slots like neck, head, uh, body, whatever. But I think the attunement rules is more kind of a just general. You can only have so many items that you're attuned to, and and you can it, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the ring one, I guess there's a ring of, you have a ring of power on a hand. It doesn't want to share the hand with other, you know, right. they're, they're jealous as magic items. They're jealous. Yeah. A lot of items have egos. So it's just a thing in my game that wishes are ultra rare. It's, that's the way the game has evolved. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I want to have the, the arcane, arcane wish more like that's a carte blanche spell that can mimic a, any other arcane spell. So to speak, up to to at least eighth level. I'm not so so you can basically, yeah, you can do anything with it. You couldn't heal or bring anyone back because that's beyond the powers of of arcane casting in my. But you can do anything that that any other arcane spell could do. So Rich Leonard Lakafka's Archer class changed all that. So that's for better for worse. So I have, I, you know, we use it as a direct fire weapon a lot just because it's just, that's the way that Len wrote well, it up. It, it, yeah. It, it, the, the medium is still the modest. It would be a modest uh, arc. Yeah. arc. Oh, but yeah. I, I, but long... I, 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 yeah. I simplify the rules but yeah. just so, so up to short range, it's the direct fire weapon. After that, you need half the, the, the height of that, the range, so to speak. So, so if you want to shoot at, at, if you have a hundred feet on the longbow, no problem. But if you shoot 200 feet, you need a hundred feet clearing it, the, the, the roof, so to speak, because then all of a sudden you have to lobby the, the, the arrow in. We have grandfathered in healing missability, and the reason we do that is it's too confusing for us to remember all that stuff. So if you have a potion on of heroism, and then you take a potion of giant strength, you're going to have to roll. But in the middle of a fight, we always forget. So we just, yeah. we just, yeah. So like we say that the healing potion is not subject to the missability table. Oh yeah. It's just, it just because of the way that our game flows. Yeah. It's a good question though, Patrick. It really is a good question. Uh, some other some other things. So, uh, like, um, Justini said, well, you know, you have a lot more wishes in your game, but th that's okay. Uh, for us, there are other things in our game that uh, exist, I know, on character sheets. The Rod of Resurrection is on a couple character sheets in the game. That brings back a p person from a spec, and they're functioning 100% from that, with no con drain or nothing, right? That's a, one of the most powerful items in the game. Highly so, recommended to uh, have yes, that. But it can drain as much as like <laughs> eight charges if it's a half elf cleric or a half elf thief or something. Yeah, so uh, that that is that is one. They're not worth bringing back. Yeah, well, yeah, Zeno. Half elf, come on. <laughs> so there are <laughs> items out there I give out, but there are also items that are banned. But as far as healing goes, you know, our, my guys like creatively to use wishes when they get them on a very rare occasion. And it does happen once in a blue moon. Casket of Fear and Dune are a good one. Don't ever let Jimmy Yingling get one. Why? What's he going to wish for? Well, you know, he always likes bad ideas. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he'll wish for something he's stupid. He's going to wish to own the tickling feather. Oh. Yeah, that's what he, he wants. He wants all proceeds from the tickling feather. Yeah. Rather than shall he work on soul characters. Well, Rich, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, that's very good. All right. Any other questions here? Look at that. We're almost on the two hour mark. Boom. Isn't that amazing? It's just crazy. This one went by real fast. Does it wish supposed to consume a five? Uh, once again, that's a spell cast wish. It also ages you five years, by the way. But not a ring of wishes wish, right, Janitor? I saved somebody with a limited wish once. You saved yourself with a limited wish. Well, who? I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of. Um, <laughs> Let's tell my, that story. The half drow guy. Oh, Hib? Hib. Yeah, I saved Hib. <laughs> that was a, when we were venturing at Highport. Let's tell the story of... Hey, that was a sacrifice for that yeah. guy. Tell both stories. Tell the story... To, you're going to love this, Anna. Tell the story of Skeeve and Lord Page going into Lord Page's bedroom. Yes, I was... It's made, it's okay. It, it, along the lines of keeping a low magic profile, <laughs> most of his disguises were 
using cantrips, the color, different color of pigment skin, hair, and whatever, all low tech stuff. So it's off the magic radar. Um, and then he, I did shape change, right? Uh, no, you were invisible. You were invisible. I thought I was like a pixie. You may have been invisible, shape change. Whatever. I was invisible because I was a pixie. And Lord Page came in and he goes, oh, another magic user, whatever, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and attacked me. And he's like, yeah. so you immediately teleported away after he hit you right. with his final answering sword multiple times. Right, right. That's but what was the limited wish from? Th this one. So okay. The slave lords. This is before. Was force... Yes. So this is before uh, the slavers reference ever came out. We're doing a slave lords thing in Highport, and Skeev decides he's going to go into a meeting and try and kill all the slave lords at the same time by himself. He goes in. Is and, this during? Is this during the solo? Yes. Yeah. This is during the solo okay. in Highport. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm being a man, so I can take them I'm all. Go and so the one, the one mage immediately goes, okay, fine. Well, you're going to be stuck here and cast Force Cage around everyone. He's stuck. He can't get away. He. So Tim. Because I got, what do you do? You panic and do what? That's I did like, a limited wish and he got did a out limited of it. wish to get away. He cast. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah? yeah, bam. Yeah, he got out. That, you're that not going to so hold this. You're not going. I'm done when I say I'm done. I leave when I say exactly. I'm done. Yeah. But you were scared. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, ooh, this is not good. Force cage is a nasty spell. Yeah, that was not. Siren, we have a half draw, half wood elf in our game. Uh, that was Stella's character. She was uh she was uh that class, that uh, combination. Yeah, <laughs> force cage is not legal. That's illegal, Jay. Flag on the play. Why is that not legal? Is it it's in our arcana? It's a legal I think spell. he just doesn't like it. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience here before we uh do some shout outs and we'll do uh do the giveaways and we'll do some uh I got stuff stacked out now. Got some good stuff coming up, including something for Tim. Yes. Hopefully you understood like how our healing game evolved. That's why I called Art of Healing. It evolved from just clerics all the way through to potions and oh, poultices I, and I, abilities. I, I did want to say I have the I have my brutal crits, right? Yes, you do. I also have advanced wounds rules, which are Real, like let's realistic. face it, you go ahead and get nicked in the Middle Ages, you're gonna get infections. So really, every time someone's damaged, you should be rolling to see if they get infected. And if they're infected, they can't heal until the infection's taken care of. Yes. And then it can go bad. So these are rules where you get a crit where you've done something bad. There's right. all sorts of healing complexities <laughs> that really is terrible. I mean, it's I mean, it's a little crunchy, but yep. it's horrific. So if you want serious grit, that's the sort of thing you want. Some infections every time. Oh, some creature lays eggs inside of you. Well, that would be net. that would be bad. Yeah, the healing swords are probably my favorite, Jay, followed by the maester. Well, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I have given a lot of weapons that do blast, cure light wounds, you know, repair injury. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, so I want one that does Tom, heal. Like looks like it that needs to be up. So uh, hit the hit the thing if you can. Uh, your prime uh, before Patrick does it. Jay, I would like one that does heal four times a day. Yeah, I know you would like it, but you're not getting it. All right, so. well, you know. Yes. Just think about it at Christmas. That'd be a real easy <laughs> Christmas present. Yeah. For who? I'll give Jimmy, all my characters I'll get give one. Jimmy, yes, I'll give Jimmy Yingling it. So that would be perfect. <laughs> For so, him, yeah. He'd like... Yeah. And they have some really bad ideas. And like, what are your I thoughts? took on... five hit points. I'm going to use this. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's all but one to four hit points, so you may only get one hit point back. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts, Anna, on the, on the conversation? Well, I think it's there, there's two sides to this. One is the game mechanics. You want a game that is as gritty or bell balanced or as superhero as you want, so to speak. So oh, you need to look each. into the the different meaning. How powerful do you want healing? How easy? How much should it? What should it encompass? Meaning, should you be able to easily bring back characters from the dead? Meaning, that's the. So you need to. Uh, when you run your game, you need to, to decide in your house ruling or whatever, or picking the addition, how greedy do you want your game? How deadly you want from a mecha mechanic standpoint? That's one side of, of healing, that the, the rules crunch a bit. And then you have the other side. 
in the setting, meaning who can administer healing? Can every character, every other character learn, like in some 5e games, almost everybody can heal a little bit, like 4D, 4e, you should just be able to, to shake some of the damage off and, and come back again? Or should it be very rare, only some really good priests or paladins can heal, no one else can, etc., and so on. So so there, there you have the, the setting perspective, meaning from from a thematic meaning should should which is that brew, brew portions uh, potions and and do herbs and stuff should they be able to heal real well and and stuff like that so there's the the setting so so i think those two sides you have to kind of keep both of these perspectives in the head at the same time and then try to make your healing system work both from a rules perspective the way you want to and also making fun interesting games from a story setting perspective absolutely and once again these are all ideas take with yeah. take mm -hmm. what you want utilize yep. them in whatever edition you play and just have yep. fun with your game and make sure your players are enjoying your game that's mm -hmm. most important yep. yep yep that's why i gave my son's group <coughs> excuse me they found a staff of healing and it's like old school i went from the the basic D, &D which is basically it can heal two to seven hit points a day on a person. So any person once that day, it can just heal two to seven hit points, but it doesn't yeah. use a charge. Okay. And, and then, then if you cast a cure spell while possessing it, it adds a four plus four bonus. It's my phone. And remember that when you do rest and recovery, that the, the it should be per level that, hit points come back so so otherwise the longer the higher level you are the longer it will take to rest and and but that that brings in other contradictions so so you have to kind of make it that's why i think the hit dice mechanic that 5e introduced or 4e have the healing surges and stuff that kind of balances it well so low and high it would take it the same amount of time for a low or a high level character to recover from from zero hit points so to speak so just uh, note that you can always uh, you can always make tweaks to your system. You can always take something that someone else has made and modify it, and that's yep. that's what this discussion is all about. And just note that ours evolved over 30, 40 years and just wanted to share that, uh, how healing has become an art form for certain people, certain classes, and that because we put bad things into our game, we had to put special healing things into the game. We want critical <laughs> hits, you got to have a way to heal them. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. So, because or you'll have the lend factor. Well, I don't yeah. want all my heroes walking around with missing legs and noses, and you know, you don't that, want that's that. That's a good point. That, that you have the mechanics. What kind of stories? If you want gritty stories where that is key, then you can. Yeah. yeah. Or is you? Yeah. That good. Great point. Sure. I'm gonna roll. Tim. All right. Just. You, I got. I got company in the house. My in-laws are here. I got right. stuff I got to do. Ten now. seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. All right. I'll do this out of order. I'm doing this out of order. Whoops, that's not the right one. Hold on. It's not the right one either. I got to find it. There we go. Saturday morning, October 28th, 7 a.m. Oh. We continue the reverse Visited. dungeon with Tim DMing, and it's titled Visitors. Visitors. So who's hmm. playing in the game? Patrick. It's going to be the full crew, except uh, Alex, Alex is, is is not able to make it. Okay, so Rob and Antichorus yeah. and he preferred to like do something for his wedding anniversary instead of mm -hmm. D &D. Oh yeah, yeah, well I can understand that. So <laughs> well, we can barely good under, maybe understand it. Yeah, that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that is Saturday morning and two Saturdays. Okay, just yep. Note that. Visitors. Thank you. Just one. All right, Tim, Anna, have a good one, man. Jay, so yep. good to see you. See ya. Bye. Bye, bye bye. All right. So <laughs> that's funny. So Anna, as what a else? guest, this yeah, is, as a yeah. guest. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, by the way, we we're close to uh, announcing uh, the the fundraiser theme. So, um, yeah, uh, it's very close. So just note that. So, Anna, what else is going on with you? Uh, I just posted a first look at the <clears throat> the the new GIS map, or at least the first draft of it, so to speak. So I post the link to it. It's uh, superficially it it doesn't look that much different, but it is 
a lot of difference under the hood and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. So, 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 and, and even the results of this first kind of um, test version of it actually looks better than the illustrator version already. And you can do a ton oh. of cool stuff with it. So, so the GIS map is coming to, to it, it's, it's actually coming to place. There is a whole bunch of stuff that goes into setting up a GIS project of this magnitude, because that will be like making a United States map or something like that. In, in GIS, it's a heck of a lot of work to, to, to do it. So, so, um, so it's coming. Yep. It's, um, the work is, I've done a, a fair chunk of, of the work, so to speak. I start out with my campaign version of the map and then I'll just remove all my campaign stuff and, and uh, make a few adjustments. And we have the, the, um, the final version of the, the regular stuff. And it will come out in many different versions, JPEG and PDF as no, previous plus there will be special versions for print in various sizes and stuff coming out and it will also come as a geo package you can download and you can install it on your own version of qgis or other gis tools and make uh, awesome. versions and for for alan groey and everybody who are keen on knowing the distance between cities this one comes with if you use it in gis there is a distance tool you can actually you can simply measure distance over and the roads and sea lanes will have little tick marks every five miles and a bigger one every 50 miles that are actually accurate to, to so, so there is a bunch of stuff like that that will actually work. So, yeah. And it has a thousand different icons in the symbology in the legend. So, so there's 998 and I'm pretty sure there will be at least two more before this ends. So, so there's, I've done a, a 998 different symbols to go on the map from, from now. And a lot of these variations like towns or capital towns, free towns and, and so on and so forth. So, so, so there's a bunch of stuff like that. They're, they will come as a, a SVG package and I will also uh, try and export them as a uh, G, um, GIF images as well with transparent background that will come as well. Excellent. Yep. Some really good stuff, Anna. Thank you. Yep. All right. This is what's coming up this week and next week. So uh, we're going to do mercenaries and intervention groups on on Wednesday. So we're going to talk about those in published source, maybe some that aren't, uh, some that are, uh, you know, uh, talk about in chat talk about your own that you have um you know so uh, this came from one of mike's posts back in like 2012 the idea so um that'll be good just to get the talk about that because they're kind of the key part of the campaign setting is usually an adventuring group so um, i think it'll be a nice discussion uh thursday night all right so that's what thursday night is a that's wrong. Uh, that's wrong. Post there next week. Okay, Thursday night's a special event ga uh, game because I have a lot of guys out. Whoops, that's out of order. All right, so it's called the Post Jow Celebration. Oh. So I have two of my players. I have Walt and, and and Tom playing characters, but I also have Bones playing Lady Israel, the Grand Champion of Champions. Dar um, Heather Hex playing Viriel, the Champion this year. Darling Creepshow is going to play Molly Hatchet, and Little Bird will play uh, Larja, her cleric mage. And uh, this is what happens after the yeah. joust is over at the bar. Oh, so. cool. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Yes. So, Great idea. Because you know how, how they said, oh, we're going to be so arrogant now? I said, well, let's see what happens. But I do mm -hmm. have uh, – yeah, uh, I, I do have a reason for this. This is going to introduce some of the what the heck – Oh, Altamira is such a great place. Nothing bad ever is happening. Well, you're going to see something in this one uh, coming up. You're going to get some. You're going to see two factions that are in my been in my campaign for years um, going at it. I think it'll be fun. It's just going to be one of those adventures that I got Altamira on the table. And I had two of my guys out thinking, let me ask all the ladies to come back on and just have fun with this. So that's what we're going to do on Thursday. Um, yeah, that open bar tab, yes. But they're going to be at, they're going to be at the end of Violet Eyed Lady, which is open super late night, and we'll we'll get to that too. So it'll be it'll be a fun it'll be a fun adventure. Um, yeah, uh, this one may be rated R or even X. You never know, Rob. But whatever, it's just let's have fun uh, with this uh, discussion. No, they're not going to the whorehouse. <laughs> Tickling feather. No, they're not, no that. Would, they're gonna go. They're gonna go to a ball. You'll see. You'll all see. It's gonna uh, actually. Um, 
Darling doesn't know, but she's going to be playing two characters for a bit. You'll see what I'm going to do. Uh, get into the what's going on in the city. Um, there will be a Gabin next Sunday. That I don't know. There may even be a special game next Saturday. Haven't gotten that far yet for Saturday and Sunday. But a week from Wednesday, uh, Carlos Lysing will be back. And so Carlos wanted to talk about fortifications of Greyhawk. This is right up Allen. Good uh, one. Good one. And Alley, too. So yep. that'll be that'll be two that'll be on Wednesday, Wednesday October twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, are gonna be oh, good. Now I know a blog post I need to make for this one. So good. oh, good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very very yep. cool. Um, yeah. So uh, fortifications of Greyhawk. Uh, that'll be uh, a week from Wednesday. Uh, then I should have a. I'm going to have. Um, oh gosh, I guess I should tell. So the Thursday after that special event, I'm gonna ha have my annual uh, my annual uh, Halloween adventure. Um, but it's probably going to be called Children of the Corn, or if I'm really in a rat mood, Children of the Cornholio. There you go, and we all, you'll understand. <laughs> that's from that's from uh, that's from Beavis and Butthead. But Children of the Corn will be the name of the adventure. All right, so uh, yeah, you like that, uh, and that'll be a week from Thursday. We'll get that in, and then we got other stuff. Ed is so tied up with co going to cons. He's pushed back mm -hmm. to like late November for stuff. Well, so. yeah, it's Game Hole Con and a yeah. whole bunch of stuff now. So, yeah. You like, you like that, Dale? Children of the Cornolio. All right, so there you go. So, I'll probably go with that as a joke. Um, yes, uh, you all got it. So, uh, yes, I was waiting for that. Uh, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to enjoy uh, enjoy my existence here as a. Uh, um, uh, won't get into personal stuff, but there's a lot going on last week, but uh, I, I'm here still. So, um... All right, let's do the giveaway, um, and let's rock and roll with this. All right, if you're in the continental U.S., all right, so because these are heavy, uh, Ravenloft or Demoed Pits will be your choice tonight. If you have both for some crazy... Um, TP <laughs> Uh, Chris, it's going to get a little funny, uh, with that one. Uh, and we'll, it'll, it'll be, a, it'll be a fun time, uh, with, with that adventure. So glad I mentioned it to everyone. Everyone wants that to be the, the name here. Let me, I'm closing this out. Hopefully this works. Closing it out. Winner. I am the bean. I am okay. the bean. Who's a, who's a regular on a many channels playing. And I see, uh, I am in the chat. So I am the bean. Get with me. That's great to see. Um, uh, no, Justinius, I gave you all. Um, uh, I, I thought you did win. You won a, a, one of these a couple weeks ago, and I haven't gotten with you. I thought that was it because we got. Um, I, I should have all winnings out to everyone except the two trophies. I'm waiting for the labels still. They should be here any day. But I think all winnings from Virtual Ground Con 4 have been out. If they're not, let me know. But I got all the codes out from Troller Games. But if I owe someone something, get with me. All right. So I am the bean. I'll get with I am the bean and, and decide which one. Um, but I think everyone has gotten all their all the winnings out. So Anna, thank you for a great dis uh, discussion tonight. Oh, thank you. Appreciate this was, it. It was good. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah. Let me check here. All right, uh, so uh, Greg, let's talk. Uh, we'll talk off, off offline here. We're going to talk through the chat. All right, so I'm going to do my normal reading to Darling, um, and we're going to uh, we're going to uh, call it a night. Everyone have a great evening, and I'll see you on Wednesday night. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I uh, hope everyone enjoys the the week. Uh, you know, um, to make the best oh, of it. Th thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, for, yeah. I know Gary. I've talked to him. Yep. Thanks, mm -hmm. Thank you yep. very much. I'm awesome. glad you're here for this one. I hope we uh, hope we give you some all some good ideas for for this, and I'll see you all soon. Hit the right button. All right, send the raid up. Wednesday. That's a good number. Yeah, 83. That's a good That's yep. really good. Yep.